call this meeting to order. Welcome everyone to the Committee of Adjustment meeting of October 23rd, 2018. My name is Ron Chatta, Committee Chair for today's meeting. This is a meeting of the Committee of Adjustment. The Committee of Adjustment is composed of five citizen members who are appointed by Brampton City Council. The Committee is authorized by the Ontario Planning Act to consider applications for minor variants from the provision of City of Brampton zoning bylaw, the committee also considered applications for consent, sometime referred to as land division applications, which includes severing a new lot from an existing lot, a lot addition easement mortgages or, or leases in excess of 21 years. My first request to ask those present to ensure that all cell phone and other electronic devices are turned off or placed on a non-audible mode during this meeting. I would like to introduce uh, committee members. To my immediate left, member Ms. Desiree Doffler. To my far left, member Mr. Robert Crouch. And my name is Ron Chatta, committee chair. Uh, member Mr. Nurse sent his regrets already. So seated at the table uh, to the right of the committee is Ms. Jeannie Myers, secretary treasurer of committee of adjustment. And seated near the podium, we have city staff who will assist the committee today. Staff, could you please uh, introduce yourself? Good morning, my name is Nancy Mitchell. I'm Elizabeth Corzola, Manager of Zoning and Sign Bylaw Services. Hi, I'm Bindu Shah, Development Planner. Adam Farr, Manager Development Review. Shelby Swinfield, Development Planner. <clears throat> Before we consider uh, today's application, uh, the committee has some procedural matter to take care of. Uh, the first is adoption of minutes. Uh, the meeting held on October 2nd, 2018 is presented in today's agenda. Committee members, is there any question or concerns about these minutes? If not, uh, may I have a motion to approve uh, the minutes of October 2nd, 2018? Motion by Ms. Doffler, seconded by... I'll second this... Uh, uh, this, mo this motion for the minutes. All in favor? This is approved. Next item is declaration of interest. Uh, does any member have a declaration of pecuniary interest to declare and declare on any matter being discussed here today? I do have one, A18140. Previously used the site uh, for signage locations for our business. <coughs> Now we move on to withdrawals or referrals. Uh, we have written request. We have written request uh, by applicant. But is there anyone here in the audience, uh, any application being discussed here today, anyone wishes to withdraw or defer their application? Approaching so the from the audience, we do have a written request. By for, I already mentioned about this application. Okay, but we should we should deal with, we should deal with this and sure. determine if there's somebody in the audience that mm -hmm. wants to speak to it. Sure. So my apologies. Please, we'll ask again to the audience. Uh, let's deal with. Uh, so do we have anybody present here for file A18160, A18161, B18024? It's a Knuff group of companies. Are you here on behalf of CNEF group of companies? Yeah, so can you please come forward first and then I'll ask the audience uh, if anyone who's here to uh, speak on behalf of uh, the delegation. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Christina Caniff. I'm general counsel and vice president for Caniff Properties uh, and Havenwood. 
Um, we would like to request, um, <coughs> as set out in our letter, a deferral, uh -huh. um, an indefinite deferral, so that we can address uh, some of the concerns uh, that we understand that um, some neighbors have raised. Uh -huh. And that is our that is our request. Okay, so you're looking for uh, indefinite uh, deferral, right? Well. I just don't want to get stuck in a situation where we've asked for a deferral for the next uh, next meeting and we haven't been able to reach out to all of the people who have raised objections. <laughs> okay, sure. We'll uh, ask uh, the committee members. Committee member, is there any question or concern at this point? <laughs> what success do you uh, anticipate having if it is deferred? It doesn't meet any of the four tests of the Planning Act. We have a number of neighbors objecting, and the lots would be significantly smaller than the surrounding lots. Pretty straightforward. That's not minor in some people's opinion. Well, respectfully, we um, we are happy to meet with city staff um, and address the concerns. Uh, we do believe that the applications meet the four tests. Um, that is that is our, our position um, and and we can meet with city staff to address to address the concerns the specific <coughs> concerns. Okay. I'd like to hear from city staff with sure. respect to their position on a deferral. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, staff, uh, could you please win your comments about uh, these applications? Uh, through the chair, members of the committee, uh, notwithstanding the recommendations contained within the report, staff are aware of the request for a referral and are supportive of further discussions with the applicant. Okay. I know uh, we have uh, some members here in the public, the concerned uh, neighbors. Uh, we have a letter from uh, Mr. Kuldeep Chahal, 8832 Credit View Road, uh, strongly against. Uh, Mr. Amarjit Chima, deep, deeply concerned. Uh, Gurinder Chima, unacceptable. Uh, Justina Sohal, uh, she's also uh, from the neighborhood, 41 Classic Drive. And we have another letter from Chima. Uh, same one from Chima, then again with uh, Mandeep Chima, and then uh, one objection is from Veena Sahadev, and uh, then another objection is from Abu Bakr, uh, No Johan, Homera Abu Bakr, Amir Abu Bakr from 53 Classic Drive. We have uh, objection from Sangeeta Arora. We have objection from Banu Rana. And we have objection from Taran Chahal. And uh, last, we have an objection from Yami Adel. So for the record, these uh, letters have been included. Uh, now I would, li I would like to ask uh, members of the public regarding this application. Is there anyone present to talk for on behalf of uh, this application? Please come forward. Your name and your address for the record. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Before we get into any discussion on this application, I think it is appropriate for committee to make a decision on whether or not we are going to go forward with this application or if it's going to be deferred. <coughs> okay. My apologies again. But... Uh, <laughs> We will take uh, take a note of your addresses. Uh, in uh, in any case, uh, we are moving forward. Are you part of uh, one of this uh, group we have? Your name uh, is here. Forty one Classic Drive. My name is Maggie Chima. Yeah, it's already here. No problem. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. I just want to I just want to reiterate, the applicant has made a request for a deferral of these applications so this is for committee's consideration today whether they're going to be deferred or if we're going to proceed in the event we do proceed the residents will be given an opportunity to, to speak yep. in the event the application is deferred um, 
recirculation of public notices will occur and the residents will have a further opportunity to voice concerns, support or attend the hearing. Okay, no problem. Uh, understand. Uh, uh, I do agree with uh, Mr. Crouch's comment, uh, uh, but again, at the same time, what I feel, uh, uh, I'm in favor of allowing the time, so there, uh, so, so the discussion or the meetings uh, can occur between staff and applicant, and we can always uh, review these uh, applications at a, at a later date. So, committee members, I am inclined to support. Uh, uh, the request of uh, applicant as we do normally allow uh, the time for them uh, to have further meetings and if they wish to maybe withdraw or come back with uh, some proposed change, this is all uh, their jurisdiction. Okay, are you putting forward a motion? I am. Thank you. So, Ms. Stoffler is putting forward a motion <coughs> to support the referral request by the applicant. Do we have seconder for this? I'll second this motion. All in favor? This application will be deferred indefinitely. Thank you. Thank you. And to all the concerned uh, neighbors, uh, we do have uh, all all of your letters and a new date with uh, we notified with, with with the circulation letter by the staff. to the neighbors that took the time to attend today. You will be provided recirculation of these uh, public notices when we have a future hearing date that's been determined. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else in the audience wishes to uh, withdraw or defer their application? Any matter being discussed here today? Good uh, morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, Secretary Treasurer. My name is uh, Mark D'Souza here on behalf of Jumpalo Investments Limited. The application in question is A 18165, municipally addressed at 1 Kenview Boulevard. We were in receipt of um, the planner's report uh, on Friday and had a chance to review it. Um, the contents of that report recommend a deferral. Um, we are a little disappointed at the um, request, but at this time we are um, in concurrence with the deferral recommendation and we'll work with staff to hopefully come back before this committee to deal with the matter at hand, which maybe or possibly would be hopefully in December. Sure, no problem. Committee members, any uh, question or concern at this point? None. Uh, staff, could you please weigh in your comments? We have no concerns with the proposed deferral. Thank you. Okay. Is this uh, indefinite deferral or there's a timeline on it? Um, it could be an indefinite deferral. Okay. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application or at least present <laughs> for this application? Seeing none. Committee members, how would you like to deal with application A18165? Motion for indefinite deferral. Motion for indefinite deferral by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Ms. Doffler. <laughs> All in favor? This is uh, deferred indefinitely. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Anybody else here for withdrawal or deferral? Seeing none. <coughs> for those unfamiliar with the Committee of Adjustment Procedure and Process, I would like to give a brief explanation and scope. Following some procedural matter that we have already undergone, the Secretary Treasurer will call the applications by announcing the application number, the name of the applicant, and addresses of the property subject to the application. The applicant or authorized agent represent, representing the applicant will then come to the podium, state their name and addresses for the record, and then present the application. I request you to reserve any questions or comments pertaining to the staff report until after planning staff has had an opportunity to present. If there is anyone in the attendance who wishes to speak to a particular application, you will be given the opportunity to do so when the application is presented. Any decision made here today may be appealed to the local planning appeal tribunal, LPAT, previously through the Ontario Municipal Board, OMB. Appeals received in the City Clerk's Office associated with minor variants and consent uh, applications will be processed and forwarded to LPAT. This process may be commenced with the Secretary Treasurer 
by filing a completed appeal form and filing fee within the prescribed 20-day appeal period. Information pertaining to the appeal process may be obtained by contacting the Secretary Treasurer within the, sec within the City Clerk's Office. Now we move on to consent application. B18025 and A18162, Ellen Slomo Bovin, the property is located at 20 and 21 Habitat Square. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Christina Boyvin and I reside at 20 Habitat Square and we're here for number 21 and 20, the severance of 20 and 21 Habitat Square. Okay. Is there anything else you wishes to add? Um, no, I don't Besides think Besides so. everything on the application? Oh, there's a variance and a severance, sorry. Perfect. What members? That appears to be in part 97A on your survey. 97A yes. will be an easement in favor of somebody else. In whose favor is it? Um, I believe easement of number 20, which is 96. So I'm not sure on that, but so lot 96. Yeah. There's also an easement across that, 95, 98, and 99. Uh, so I assume these are access easements and you shouldn't be uh, constructing a shed in that easement even if you moved it to two feet because the easement is longer than two feet, wider than two feet. Right, yes. right. We had, we had no clue at this time. This was years ago that shed was built, so. <clears throat> Thank you. question oh wait sorry can I add something the easement is only two feet beside the houses it's actually not where the shed is located I, I have sketches here um, that has this little green square on it yep right in the middle of the easement it's in the middle of the easement yes oh okay the easements are across the back of all the lots on your side of Habitat Square. Oh, okay. So I, I assume they're access, <coughs> access easements that get to backyards. And I don't know. Okay. I'd like to know. We'll uh, hear from staff, I guess, for further clarity. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on these two applications, A18162 or B18025? None. Staff, could you please read your comments? Um, with respect to the easement, um, there were no concerns uh, identified at, uh, with legal. Mm -hmm. um, so the effect of the application is to reestablish the former boundary line between uh, 20 Habitat Square and 21 Habitat Square to reinstate two separate lots. Um, and the application is supportable. We had no concerns with respect to uh, the consent applications. Um, and with respect to the variance applications, uh, the application is supportable, subject to uh, following conditions being imposed, that the variance be approved only to the extent as indicated on the sketch attached to the public notice, that the attach uh, that the accessory structure be moved to attain a minimum rear yard setback of one feet or 0 0.304 meters, that drainage from the accessory structure's roof shall flow onto the applicant's property, that drainage on adjacent properties is not adversely affected, and that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the approval uh, null and void. Okay. So, any further questions, Mr. Crouch? Been appraised of this uh, easement. Uh, so, the legal department uh, attended the cross-functional meeting, and um, so they they had the opportunity <coughs> to comment. Uh, but if you'd like, I can check into that further um, and get back. 
if, if I may just add to that, sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. Sure. If that is an easement, and, and I don't know that it necessarily is, but it certainly appears to be, as Member Crouch has noted, the shed is not permitted to be constructed on an easement. So regardless of whether legal has an objection to it being there, the zoning bylaw prohibits the construction of a shed on an easement. Um, if, if it's not an easement, then it could be just part of the block that was assembled. It um, could be. It, it, I, I don't know. So yeah. perhaps if it's um, advisable at this time, staff could add a condition. Yep. If you are considering approving the severance and then the associated variance for the setbacks, um, to state that if the shed is placed on an easement, um, that verification of that shall be provided and the shed shall be relocated to be repositioned off the easement while still maintaining the zoning setbacks for the shed. I'd feel much more comfortable with that condition. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Um, I guess a, a little bit. <laughs> Could you? I think you have to leave the back of your lot open for access by all of your neighbors and they have to okay. do the same thing. Okay. Because of the absence perhaps of uh, a garage door to get your lawnmower in the backyard or something. <coughs> okay. Um, okay, here, here's my question. <clears throat> when the developer developed these properties, all of the sheds were placed on that back property line. So if it was a, you know, I guess an easement <coughs> issue, why would they have placed all of the sheds in the entire area in that, in that space? I think you're right in your question, but at the same time, what the staff and the member, Mr. Crouch, indicate, uh, there might not be an easement, but in case there was. Okay. So we are just uh, protecting here everyone. The For second sure. option is put this application to a different date and come back after checking. My opinion is, as Mr. Crouch suggested and staff is, uh, staff is in agreement with that, if we include one condition, which satisfied everyone, uh, I think we are, we can go further on this application today. Okay? You're saying we can't go further? We can, yeah. You can go further okay. on the application? With the, with, the, with the condition, and that's my okay. position okay. as well. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So can we have a proper just, wording on this? No. Sorry, you want to add something? Yeah, sorry, just a quick question, because also this severance, because the reason why we we found out about the, the properties being merged is that my mom purchased another house, so we sold both of the houses. So we also have to be out by November 30th, so we have a deadline. We've already had to extend the closings mm -hmm. uh, by two, oh, two and a half months. So is this going to delay it again? Or if uh, there is, I, I do understand that you have a timeline, uh, but I think this application is in front of us first time. It's, it was never uh, deferred. Uh, but uh, if there is a no easement, as you are mentioning, you have seen other uh, uh, sheds there. So I hope there's no easement. Okay. But again, uh, if there are some concerns, we just want to protect everyone on that, okay. uh, on that note. And uh, in my opinion, it's just after today's uh, decision, there's 20 days appeal period. And uh, if there's no condition, uh, basically that condition is there, but if there's no easement, then you're good to go. Okay. Unless uh, Ms. Myers can there's say something. Mr. Chair, through, through you to the applicant. Okay. Uh, the land division is being approved today. Okay, okay. So that gets your real estate deal closed. Okay, good. Whether somebody's upset about where you have to move the shed, is to be determined. Okay, but gotcha. the condition still, uh, the condition is that currently that you have to move the shed in a little bit. For sure. And we can, if we the easement yeah. is indeed an easement, quite a bit. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Can we have a proper wording? Mm -hmm. uh, the staff would recommend with the application number, so we can add. Certainly, through you, Mr. Chair, I'm proposing um, that a condition be added. <clears throat> Excuse me. That the applicant f confirm whether Block 97A shown on the survey is an easement, and if so, the shed shall be relocated such that it does not encumber the easement at the rear of the property. Okay. Uh, motion put forward by Mr. Crouch to approve with the amended condition. Do we have second there? Seconded by Ms. Doctor. All in favor? This is approved. 
1026-2208702 Ontario Inc. Properties located on Countryside Drive. Uh, my name is Eric Murthu. I'm the agent here on behalf of the owner at the property at, uh, I guess, Municipal Zero Countryside Drive. It's just at uh, west, sorry, east of Clarkway on the north side of Countryside. Um, it is currently uh, one property which was merged some time ago, uh, having an approximate, uh, I guess, an approximate area of um, roughly 30 acres at the moment. So. We're seeking a, uh, a severance uh, request. To, sorry, request to consent to sever the property, um, with about four hectares uh, being severed and the remainder being retained. And this is to essentially establish a former lot line that was there before the the current layout of the of the land. Okay. Any question to the applicant, or the agent uh, at this point? Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Ma'am, staff, could you please bring your comments? To you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we are uh, we support this application subject to a few standard conditions. May I read those out? Please. Yeah. Um, number one, a secretary treasurer certificate fee shall be paid in the amount current at the time of the issuance of the cer certificate of the secretary treasurer. Number two, approval of the draft reference plan as applicable shall be obtained at the Committee of Adjustment Office, and the required number of prints of the resultant deposited reference plan shall be received. Uh, number three, subsection 53 and R5 of the Planning Act, as amended, shall apply to the subsequent conveyance or transaction involving the parcel of land that is subject to this consent. And the last, um, that the owner shall make arrangements satisfactory to the chief building official, that all future services have separate connection to the municipal <coughs> water, sanitary, and storm sewer systems in accordance with the Ontario Building Code. Thank you. Thank you. Do you understand and in agreement with these conditions? Yes, we're okay with those. Okay, good. If no further discussion. Motion to approve with conditions by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Ms. Doffler. All in favor? This is approved. Thank you. Thank you. and B18022 Smart Reed and Callaway Brandport 2 Inc. Properties are located on Airport Road. Good morning. Good morning, members of the committee. My name is Joe Seamer with Smart Centers. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background <coughs> to uh, to this application and uh, just to help you understand where we're at with things. Um, Smart Centers, as you may know, is a retail developer for the most part, and through the last several years, retail is getting harder and harder to do. So we've uh, partnered with a company out of the United States called Smart Stop, and uh, we are in uh, proposing to build a uh, self-storage next to the no-frills on this property. Um, so it's a great opportunity for us to help fill up our sites, otherwise a lot of our land would sit vacant for a long time. It's a great use, it's a low impact use, and uh, we feel it's a great fit for our property here. Um, because we are joint venturing with a new company, with the, uh, the Smart Stop people, we're required to create a new parcel for our property to uh, contain this new uh, self-storage use. So with that, we've uh, encountered a number of issues and complications as, uh, as we would expect with a new development of this type. So we're creating a new parcel. It's within the shopping center itself. Um, we happen to have two property lines that, uh, that are within this subject land that were created. 
So we're actually bringing forward two applications here. One is for a lot addition. It's for a small little area to be added to the larger portion that will be severed from the, uh, the no more northerly parcel. And with that, we would create this new parcel to contain the self-storage line. Um, so it's, it's, it's had some issues as far as just understanding with staff, uh, engineering staff and building staff, how we service this property. We've had several meetings. We've been able to get some uh, through a resolution that we're going to create two easements. One is for sanitary services and the other is for water services. Those services are going to come directly from Airport Road. Because their stormwater management of the site is, uh, is complicated, we've got stormwater management tanks within the property. The pipes are uh, intercrossed uh, in a number of different areas. So we're going to do a, um, an agreement between ourselves, the new joint venture, and any other properties that we also own on the, uh, on the site so that we can share for, uh, for such things as stormwater, for access, uh, so vehicles can get through to the site. So essentially, we're creating a parcel for this new property, for this new venture, but it, you, won't really under, you, you won't see any difference to the way the, uh, the property is going to work in the future. It's all um, uh, going to work as one. The shopping center will continue to work together. Um, so we do have a positive staff report from, uh, from the planning department. We're very happy about that. Um, one thing that uh, we've tried to, um, to uh, ask the planning department if they could relieve a little bit of our um, condition that, uh, that we're being asked to, to accept for this application. And is that, that is that uh, the severance, um, the certificate for the severance only be granted after site plan approval is provided. Um, that provides a little bit of an issue for us just because we're trying to create this joint venture partnership parcel uh, by the end of the year. <coughs> I, I think we're close on getting, cl uh, getting through to site plan approval, but um, we're, there can always be hiccups. So we're asking the, the, the condition to um, allow for the commissioner to provide us a relief that if site plan approval is, is substantially complete or uh, we believe that, that site plan approval is, is imminent, that uh, the commissioner may be able to provide a waiver so that we can uh, have the committee uh, issue the, um, this, the certificate. So that's uh, for your consideration. Um, I also want to let you know that we're going to come back uh, next month, so November 13th, we're going to come back for a, a, a minor variance, and that is because the property line that we are creating, the new the zone line, will actually go through the new proposed building, and so we're going to ask for relief of that zone line, and that's only for use. It has nothing to do with any other matters of the site, so just to let you know that that will be coming forward as well. Thank you very much. Sure, no problem. We'll discuss uh, with staff during our discussion regarding your request. Many members, any question to the agent at this point? And anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application, these two applications? None. Staff, could you please bring your comment and... Uh... Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll go through the two <coughs> applications, so the B18-21, read the conditions, B18-22, read the conditions, um, and then I'll address the, the matter sure. of the site plan approval. Um, so in regard to application B18-021, staff believe this is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. Number one, that a secretary treasurer certificate fee shall be paid in the amount current at the time of the issuance of the certificate of the secretary treasurer. Number two, that approval of, dra of the draft reference plans as applicable shall be obtained at the Committee of Adjustment Office, and the required number of prints of the resultant deposited reference plan shall be received. Number three, that subsection 53 and or 5 of the Planning Act as amended shall apply to any subsequent conveyance or transaction involving the parcel of land that this that is the subject of this consent. Number four, that a solicitor's undertaking shall be received indicating that the severed land and the abutting land shall be merged for Planning Act purposes at the time of the registration of the transfer to which the Secretary Treasurer's certificate is affixed. Number five, an undertaking shall be received from a solicitor confirming that the legal description of the resultant lot and the legal description in any mortgages encumbering the resultant lot will be identical within four weeks of the date of the Secretary Treasurer's certificate under the Planning Act, or alternatively, that no part of the resultant lot is encumbered by any mortgages. 
the resultant lot is the severed land and the land to which the severed land is to be merged. Number six, that associated consent application B18022 be approved. And number seven, that prior to the issuance of the certificate of the Secretary Treasurer, associated site plan application SP18028.000 shall be approved. And then in regard to application B18022, uh, the application is supportable subject to the following conditions. Uh, number one, that the Secretary Treasurer certificate fee shall be paid in the amount current at the time of the issuance of the certificate of the Secretary Treasurer. Two, that approval of the draft reference plans is applicable together with the terms of any associated easements shall be obtained at the Committee of Adjustment Office and the required number of prints of the resulted deposit deposited reference plans shall be received. Number three, that prior to issuance of the certificate of the Secretary Treasurer, the owner shall be required to enter into consent agreement for the severed and retained lands, which consent <coughs> agreement shall be registered on title to the land subject to the application in priority to all other encumbrances, all to the satisfaction of the Commissioner of Planning and Development Services and the City Solicitor. The consent agreement shall generally include provisions, including but not limited to the following. A, that reciprocal easements, which it may include blanket easements over the several severed and retained lands, may be required to be conveyed prior to site plan approval at the discretion of the Commissioner of Planning and Development Services and the Commissioner of Public Works and Engineering for purposes including but not limited to parking, access, services, maintenance, and any other purposes identified by the City, Region Appeal, or Utility Agencies, and that the owner be responsible for all costs associated with the preparation deposit and registration of any and all reference plans and easements required for compliance with Clause A shown above. Number four, that associated consent application B18021 be approved. Number five, that prior to the issuance of the Certificate of the Secretary Treasurer, associated site plan application SP1828 be approved. And number six, that arrangements satisfactory to the Region Appeal Public Works Department shall be made with respect to the location of existing and installation of new services and or possible required private service easements. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, in regard to the matter of site plan, um, so staff have reviewed where the site plan is currently at. Um, as well, given the specific nature of what's to be accomplished by this site plan, those servicing easements um, that need to be put in place, we need to understand how this site is ultimately going to function to ensure that those easements are being put in the right place. Um, so given kind of the scope and where that site plan is at currently, staff are of the opinion that it's reasonable for this condition to be imposed, that the site plan be completed prior to that certificate being issued. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, do you have any sort of timeline, assuming that the applicant's aggressive? Um, He's concerned mm -hmm. about the end of this year. Not off the top of my head. Um, it, I'm not personally working on the site plan, but I have uh, spoken okay. with the planner. Um, they are on their second submission. Um, there's not really any major issues that have come up, um, and planning staff are definitely willing to work with the applicant to bring this to approval as soon as possible. Thank you. I'm inclined, Mr. Chair, to uh, uh, support the uh, staff conditions with respect to site plan approval. We don't know what issues are there. We don't know how long it's going to take because the rate planner isn't there, but I'm not prepared to uh, forego that protection for rate payers. To the agent, uh, I do understand your concerns. Sometimes it take longer, but uh, after the discussion, I'm also inclined to support uh, Mr. Crouch's uh, uh, decision. Uh, are you in agreement with these <coughs> conditions? Yeah, I th we've reviewed them and we find them acceptable. Okay. Motion to approve the conditions. Motion to approve application B18022 and B18021 uh, with condition by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Ms. Duffler. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, sir. Calling application A eighteen zero one two two three one one seven zero two Ontario Limited and Clean Progress Investments Limited. The property is located on Brewster Road. Hello again. 
Um, my name is Eric Maritsu. I'm here from Ken DevCon. We are the agent for these for this variance application uh, for the site located at Queen, uh, sort of the southeast corner of <coughs> Queen and Bomaris. Um, so this site is currently going through a site plan uh, approval process, uh, which is fairly advanced um, to permit, uh, I guess, a range of commercial uses. And there's some variances that are re we're required to, um, I guess, uh, obtain in order to get site plan approval. Um, so um, just to lift, just to name them for you, the parking we are deficient on requires a minimum of 111 spaces, whereas, whereas we are providing 96. Um, we were seeking a variance to permit a front yard setback of six meters, whereas a bylaw requires a setback of 7.5. Uh, we're seeking a rear yard setback of three meters, whereas the bylaw requires seven. Um, a, a, an exterior side yard setback is requested as well for three meters, uh, whereas six meters is the minimum. Um, an interior side yard setback of 1.8 is requested whereas the minimum interior sidebar, side yard setback is four meters. Um, we are requesting to permit commercial uses under uh, section 17.04 within buildings B and C to be located in excess of 90 meters from the intersection of uh, Regional Road 107 and Bomaris Drive within the property. Um, and just a couple more here. To and we're also seeking a variance to permit landscape open, sta uh, open space strip of six meters abutting Queen Street, uh, whereas a nine meter strip is required. And lastly, to permit a day nursery where uh, there is no day nursery permitted currently. <coughs> okay. Any members, any question to the agent at this point? Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this <coughs> application? None. Staff, could you please make your comments? Uh, yes, through you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this application first came in December of last year, and we'd asked the applicant uh, that we we needed additional time to uh, review the application, to advance the site plan process that it was going through, and also to receive some technical information in support of the very the various requests. Um, the applicant has since provided a parking analysis and has also provided us with a, uh, a land use compa compatibility study that addresses both air quality and noise. And uh, that study for the daycare use was able to confirm to us that uh, um, there were no significant health impacts or nuisance impacts uh, with the daycare use and that provided that it be properly screened from the industrial uses by way of landscaping and or solid fencing. Conditions to that effect have been imposed. Um, the uh, parking analysis that was undertaken by the applicant uh, indicated that the 99 spaces <coughs> being proposed was sufficient to accommodate the peak periods being uh, on the site there and they used two proxy sites that also had a uh, Starbucks uh, to determine the parking uh, requirements. Um, the various setback requirements um, are typically set up for industrial type uses that are in the area. The site is zoned with the site specific industrial zone as is the, uh, the adjacent lands to the east which is a larger parcel. The intent was that the commercial lands opportunities be provided on that site and, um, um, and so the, the, the smaller scale commercial uses that are being requested on the applicant's property uh, are sufficient uh, to warrant the reduced setbacks that are being proposed, uh, including the landscape strip at the front. Um, so staff are supportive of the uh, proposed development by way of the conditions being recommended. Uh, would you like me to read through those conditions, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so staff are in support of the application subject to the following conditions, that the day nursery use in Building C shall only be located as shown on the plan attached to the public notice. Second, that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Third, that the requirement for parking for any combination of uses permitted in the M1-1704 zone be calculated at the applicable parking rate in accordance with the zoning bylaw and shall not exceed 111 parking spaces. Fourth, that the owner finalize site plan approval under site plan file SP17-060, execute a site plan agreement and post any required financial securities and issuance to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services within one year of the date of the Committee's decision. The conditions of the site plan approval shall have regard to the recommendations contained within the approved land use compatibility study for both air and noise. Fifth, the applicant shall implement the site plan within 180 days of approval of the site plan or as extended at the discretion of the Director of Development Services. And lastly, the failure to comply 
with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, just uh, one. Uh, it says 96. I think I heard 99 when you mentioned it. So just uh, want to reconfirm it. Okay. Three. Provide 96 parking space, not 99. Um, I, I did believe I did say 99. And. Um, uh, is that what's on the site? Uh, yeah. 99. Oh, yeah, okay. 96. Okay, Mr. The Chairman, I, think I, made, I got that. Uh, that was incorrect. 96 was the correct number was provided, so it is 96. Okay. How would the commercial use change your opinion with respect to the frontage setback? from 7.5 meters to 6 meters. Okay, so the building setback along the frontage. Um, the, the intent for the zoning there was supposed to be for large industrial buildings that were going to be tall, high massing. We needed them set back a little bit further as we typically would do and we wanted more landscaping in front, which is why that, those numbers were put forth. But because we're having smaller commercial buildings, the massing is going to be a smaller building and therefore pushing a little closer to the street frontage, which is what we do for smaller commercial buildings, was considered to be appropriate with the landscaping that's involved. Thank you. Any other question concerned by committee members? None? Anyone in the audience? None? If no further, uh, sorry, uh, to the applicant, you understand and in agreement with all these conditions? Yes, we're in agreement. Okay. Motion to approve with conditions. Motion to approve with conditions by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Ms. Duffler. All in favor? Yes, this is approved. Thank you. Mohinder, Narinder, and Mandy Parvana. The property is located at 1 Bowman Avenue. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Mandy Parvana. I'm the owner of the property. Okay. wishes to add something or we have application in front of us you want to add something beside that or that's all uh, no he's actually my agent your name and uh, your address please uh, to the agent okay my <clears throat> my name is uh, Baha Rahman my address is uh, th 31 Royal West Drive in uh, Brampton Okay, yeah, on application it says an address from Mississauga, I just noticed. So I assume that's also your address, right? Yes. Okay, no problem. You wishes to add anything? Uh, no, actually, like, uh, we have an uh, existing accessory building, mm -hmm. and just we want to keep it as is with the driveway for the accessibility for uh, pick no up problem. any material or, or stuff from, from there. No problem. Committee members, any question? Anyone in the audience wishes to spe speak on this application? None. Staff, could you please win your comments? Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Staff has reviewed the application, finds it. We do consider it to meet the four tests established in the Planning Act, and we are su in support of it, subject to a number of conditions. One, that the extent of the variance be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Two, that no plumbing shall be installed in the detached garage. Three, that no commercial or industrial uses shall operate from the detached garage. And four, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the variance null and void. Okay. To the homeowner and the agent, do you understand and accept these conditions? Yes. Okay. If no further discussion, looking for a motion. Motion by Mr. Crouch. Seconded. With conditions. With conditions and seconded by Mr. Doffler. All in favor? This is approved. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Eighteen zero nine six. Jason and Katie Allen. Property is located at eight Adele Court. I, I'm J 
Jason Allen, co-owner. Good morning. Good morning. Would you add something else beside we have this application? Nope. For, okay. Twenty member, any question to the homeowner at this point? Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None? Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff recommends approval of this application A18096, subject to seven conditions. Uh, condition number one is that the owner, the owners finalize the site plan approval under city's file SP18-090.000, execute a site plan agreement and post uh, any required financial securities and insurance if required to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services. Condition number two, that uh, the owners secure a building permit for the proposed construction. Condition number three, that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on this sketch attached to the public notice. Number four, that the owner shall provide tree protection fencing around the existing trees and root zone within the drip line of the trees that are within five meters of the construction area or access route. Uh, this also includes uh, any trees on the city's property. Condition number five, that the drainage on adjacent properties shall not be adversely affected. Condition number six, that drainage from accessory structure roof shall flow into the subject property. And condition number seven, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Thank you. You have any concern or anything on these uh, uh, proposed conditions? Are you in agreement with these conditions? Acceptable? There's just one I'm concerned with. The one tree in my backyard is dying already, so I'm kind of concerned we're getting that for that one, but it'll be replaced anyway. Okay, so I guess you answered your question. It's all good. Okay, so if no further discussion, looking forward to uh, more. Motion to approve the conditions. Motion to approve with conditions by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Mr. Offer. All in favor? This is approved. Calling application A18143, Yvette and Ridley Pennyfeather. Property is located at 18 Woodbury Court. Good morning, Chair and Committee members. My name is John Carlo Tari. I'm the active agent on behalf of this file. And our application uh, here today is for a sunroom addition in the rear. We're asking for a relief of rear yard setback and lot coverage. Uh, we have reviewed the city recommendation comments and we are in acceptance with them. Okay. Any question to the agent? None. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Staff are in support in part to, uh, to this application with the <coughs> following conditions being imposed. Number one, that the first, uh, that variance number three to permit a rear yard setback of 0 0.02 meters to an existing accessory structure, which is the shed, whereas the bylaw requires a minimum setback of 0 0.6 meters to all property lines be refused. That the extent of variances is one and two be generally limited to that shown on this sketch attached to the public notice. Number three, that the owner provide tree protection fencing around the existing trees and root zone within the drip line of the trees that are within five meters of the construction area or access route. This includes any trees on street property. Number four, that the maximum width of the sunroom shall be 4.3 meters. And finally, five, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Okay. To the agent, as you already indicated, you are in agreement with these conditions, right? Yes. For a motion. Motion to approve with conditions by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Ms. Doffler. All in favor? This is approved. Thank you all. Calling application A18 
A18154 Bhupinder Singh. Property is located at 706 Peter Robertson Boulevard. Morning, Chair. Uh, morning, Committee members. My name is Dilip Shinyara. I'm representing uh, 112 Mountain Ash, uh, homeowner. Sorry? I'm representing 112 Mountain Ash, the owner of the property. I believe this uh, application is being deferred. Sorry, Mr. Chair. We're not dealing with 112 Mountain Ash. I've I'm so sorry. Uh, 706 Peter Robertson. I am representing them as well. I do okay. apologize. Yeah, that's what I was concerned. Thank you. No problem. Just to reconfirm your name, please. Dilip Chenyara. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chenyara, please go ahead. Um, we've had a backwards and forwards session with the planner with respect to the variances we are requiring. And I think it fell a little short uh, for the deadlines that they were working with. And we were asked to defer the application for November 13. Am I right, Ms. Myers? that that is the recommendation of planning staff. The variance that we're seeking is really minor in our opinion. We have um, the property has two um, rear yard uh, accesses. One is 1.2 meters. The other one is a little short. We are short by eight inches based on our design. Uh -huh. There is a walkout below grade stairs that's been built and we're trying to save the owner from having to demolish it because he has a setback on the garage. So where the staircase is, we have uh, more space in terms of what's available. It's set back. So we're short by eight inches. Uh, and the design of the slab and the railing, we have shown on the drawings to try and accommodate as much as we can. So we'll have 40 inches on one side, 1.2 on the other side, and we believe uh, it, it could be supported uh, for this gentleman to try and save his below grade. Uh I noticed during my site visit there was a space uh, at the site, so but uh, no problem, because uh, uh, the staff is recommending deferral till November 13. So let's hear their point of view. Any members, any question or concern to the agent at this point? Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? 706 Peter Robertson Boulevard. None. Staff, could you please any your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair. As applicant's agent mentioned, we are working with the agent to request additional information which would be reflective of cu current site, site conditions. So we uh, support the deferral until the next meeting. Okay, so all good? Oh, we good. Ms. Myers, any issue? Uh, for the, I don't think so. We need to circulate anything November 13. Uh, circulating public notices is my understanding mm -hmm. that the applicant will be amending his application for a further reduction in the setback mm -hmm. so the variance that has been circulated is not properly identified in accordance with um, current site conditions mm -hmm. the applicant is still to provide an amendment letter <coughs> and um, some revised application sketch uh, okay. are you okay with that uh, mr. Himanshu? Through you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, I'm, I uh, support uh, Ms. Meyer's uh, recommendation. My only question is if uh, there is an amendment to be provided and uh, based on its very next meeting and circulation has to go out, is that a sufficient time? Mr. Crouch, were you were saying? Well, I was going to suggest a definite uh, deferral, Mr. Chair, uh -huh. um, and leave it to the applicant to uh, uh, pace his opportunity to get back. May I add a comment, please? Please go ahead. Um, if I'm correct, uh, the planner and I, the last application, uh, the revision that we did, it was in compliance, but we were short of time in terms of circulating it. And it's, in my opinion, the dimension is so clear there that the decision could be made today uh, because you guys have been there. He knows the circumstances. And we've given him a revised sketch to show that. And the only thing outstanding is a letter, you know, uh, which we can send. But we've actually shown him how we can uh, achieve what we're looking for. But we also understand that with your revised sketch, there's a further side yard setback required. 
Uh, what we have, uh, if I may clear this, we have a retaining wall that's 10 inches. Um, the current um, handrail and the shed that's built over is coming out. We're proposing the handrail to be on the inside face of the staircase because we have quite a lot of space. The slab, existing walkway, and the retaining wall will be reconstructed and leveled. So the walkway is actually 40 inches wide and not from where the retaining wall is. The retaining wall seems to step up two inches at the mm -hmm. rear. At the front it's level, at the back it seems to pop out. So we were just suggesting by doing the correction there, we will get 40 inches clear. And as we said, we have 1.2 on the other side of the property. And in my opinion, I think it should suffice. Uh, we're just correcting the condition so you know it's more desirable. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to staff, um, now I'm perplexed. You say you need more stuff. He says you don't. <coughs> Will you assist me? Through you, Mr. Chair. Uh -huh. um, so the information that was reflected on the uh, public notice was not reflective of that. We received the information, you know, much after the deadline, and and that's what we are, uh, you know, looking at so that we can work with. Uh, the requested information and and give the recommendation uh, that we are satisfied with thank you if staff feels uh, they are okay with the november 13 and uh, we do have what required it's just a matter of uh, circulation then i have no problem supporting november 13 through you mr uh, through you mr chair if i might interrupt uh, staff has indicated that there's still a letter of undertaking required and perhaps some more sketches. Um, and the applicant admitted he had one letter to get in. So rather than assume he'll get it in this afternoon, perhaps an indefinite deferral would be yep. better and he can come back on November 13th if it's all done in time. I do agree with you, uh, Mr. Crouch, on that. Just a uh, quick uh, question to uh, zoning department. Is there any order to comply? Any? I suspect there is an order to comply, likely from the building division. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have that information right in front of me today, but uh, it is constructed without the benefit of a permit, which is why we are now here. It would not have been granted a permit. Um, I have not seen the revised sketch, so zoning staff would need to review that to confirm the extent of the variance. Um, moving the handrail does not reduce the nature of the setback. The setback from the property line will still continue to be measured to the outside of the retaining wall that supports the below grade entrance. And the sketch should accurately reflect that dimension, not the dimension to the handrail. Thank you. I am inclined to support uh, indefinite deferral and you will have the opportunity to come back whenever everything is ready. Are we talking about November 13th or? Not uh, November indefinite? 13th. Based on the discussion, I think uh, I do uh, support Mr. Crouch's suggestions that we should go ahead with uh, indefinite deferral. You have the opportunity to come back November 13th, provided you completed your application appropriately. I have no issues with that, sir. Good. Uh, no motion for discussion. indefinite deferral. Motion for indefinite deferral by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Ms. Doppler. All in favor? This application has been deferred indefinitely. Thank you. Okay. Calling application A18155, Brian and Michelle Brace. Property is located at 56 Edgebrook Crescent. <coughs> Morning, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Morning. My name is Patrick Cheeseman. I'm the agent uh, for the homeowner. Uh, today we are requesting uh, two minor variances. The first minor variance uh, addresses a proposed um, open carport uh, in the side yard, and the second minor variance addresses a minor setback for the existing storage shed. The, the existing storage shed. Um, since we've uh, since we've applied for the minor variance, we've received a staff recommendation, in which we uh, which we accept and we want to work with. As well, the homeowners have uh, circulated the uh, neighborhood and got a letter of support for their application for the two minor variances. Okay. Any question to the agent <coughs> at this point? And anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? For the record, we have a letter from 54 Sedgebrook. 
by Prozon Sangian. We just like to be notified uh, the decision uh, for committee's uh, today's uh, today committee's decision. They would like to be notified. Okay. Staff, could you please read your comments? Just by the. For the record, we would like to uh, uh, <coughs> include a letter of support signing by several uh, neighbors uh, in, in support of uh, 56 Sedgebrook Prison. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, the application meets the four tests of minor variance. Um, and uh, we find that this uh, application is supportable, mm -hmm. subject to the following conditions being imposed. That the variance be approved only to the extent as indicated on the sketch <coughs> attached to the public notice. That roof drainage from the carport shall flow onto the applicant's property. That drainage from the accessory structure storage shed be contained solely on the applicant's property. That drainage on adjacent properties is not adversely affected that a grading plan must be approved by the City of Brampton Public Works and Engineering Department prior to construction, that the applicant provide th tree protection fencing around the existing trees and not, and root zone within the drip mm -hmm. line of the trees that are within five meters of the construction area or access route, including any trees on city property, that the carport shall remain of an open style carport and not be enclosed, except for the southerly limit of the carport, that is the exterior wall of the single detached dwelling. And finally, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the approval null and void. Thank you. We understand and, and comply. In agreement? Yeah, in agreement, yes, sorry. Okay. Okay. Motion to approve with conditions. Motion to approve with conditions by Mr. Couch, seconded by Mr. Ocker. All in favor, this is approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Calling application A18156, Amarjit and Gurinder Paul Singh. The property is located at 22 Oakley Boulevard. <coughs> Good morning, Chairman, Council Members, and Staff. For the record, my name is Peter Vizikas of Empire Design Company, mm -hmm. here to represent the owners of this property for the application before us today. After your review of the justification report, along with the revised site plan submitted, we feel that the variances for insufficient parking space depth and increased driveway width are both minor in nature. After revisiting the property once more, I have found that the left side of the driveway has been constructed as a concrete sidewalk adjacent to his driveway, which is physically separated from the driveway, having a measurement of 0.86 meters in width, and the driveway width measures at 7.57 meters in width. I do have photos here. If you do not have them, I can pass them along. Mm that yeah as you can see the concrete walkway is physically separated uh, it does have adjacent to it um, to the left is one meter high shrubs which is physically impossible to walk past that if we were to park on the walkway now the owners do have a disability and need a hard surface to walk on in order to get to their front door uh, the driveway again measuring a point seven five seven meters in width uh, has been agreed to be reduced by 0.6 meters on the right hand side to create the 0.6 meter landscape strip as required by the zoning bylaw which will reduce his driveway down to 6.97 meters in total width which is a difference of 0.26 meters in width according to the zoning bylaw um, as for the re reduced parking space depth, there still will be enough space to park a smaller vehicle <coughs> within that garage space. The owner's largest vehicle is a BMW X1, which measures an overall width of 4.45 meters, according to BMW Stats Canada, which I have right here in front of me. 
Our overall length is 4.5 meters, and the railing uh, attached to the concrete curb is an additional 2 inches past that, which is 0 0.05 meters extra. Considering that the garage door is an oversized single door, a smaller vehicle still has the potential to enter and still fit comfortably. The owners of the property are elderly, they are on disability, and uh, they are still working to maintain their expenses. The additional expense to remove the existing basement entrance through the garage in order to create a legal parking space will set them back considerably. Given the fact that we will reduce the driveway width on the right-hand side by 0.6 meters and still maintain ample parking spaces on the driveway and within the garage, we feel that the proposed variances of reduced parking space depth and increased driveway width are both minor in nature and request the committee members to accept and uh, approve in order to proceed. I have the owners here with me if you wish to speak with them as well. I have Stats Canada BMW, I have the driveway single garage door which is ample sized. So no problem. We'll, uh We'll be hearing uh, <coughs> staff's uh, comments and then I'll be in position to comment on the situation. Sure. Okay. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, the staff is of the opinion that this application uh, is not supportable. Uh -huh. um, <coughs> two of the re requested variances do not meet uh, the three tests of the minor variance. Uh, most importantly, uh, the official plan states where an application for a second unit fails to conform to any of the requirements of the implementing zoning bylaw, a zoning bylaw amendment shall be required. Um, in addition, um, one of the residential uh, official plan policies also requires driveway designed to relate to lot width and be sized accordingly to function as a driveway surface leading to a garage. When a garage is provided, it is considered to assist in providing the required number of parking spaces for the property and the driveway is the logical means to get to the garage. Um, the requested variance for the garage, uh, the driveway width um, goes beyond the primary function of the driveway, which is to provide a surface leading to a garage. <coughs> so these are uh, mainly the reasons we do not support this uh, May I comment? Please go ahead. <coughs> The adjacent neighbor also has his driveway paved right to the lot line, which we're not in concern with right now. The fact of the matter that we're reducing the driveway width and still having enough width for two parking vehicles, that portion of concrete walkway should not be considered as part of the driveway. The owners do need that space as a hard surface to walk due to their disability of walking difficulty. Uh, as for the driveway space inside the garage, it's actually 4.55 meters in width, and we have actually 4.45 meters in overall vehicle length. So there is still ample room. For, excuse me, for, uh, for the committee's benefit, <coughs> uh, I have a, a Google Street View image that gives you the, the full perspective on the driveway width. <coughs> yes, that'll probably help you. Well, I was there for my site visit. But uh, you can certainly, yeah. Some other layer. So by reducing by 0.6 meters on the right-hand side, leaving the concrete walkway for accessibility to the front, <coughs> line, we end up with 6.97 meters. I'm sorry. If I could ask, uh, if I could ask you to speak up, uh, I'm really having difficulty hearing you. Okay. So by reducing the driveway width on the right hand side by 0.6 meters mm -hmm. retaining the walkway on the right hand side for accessibility to walk the driveway actually becomes 6.97 meters in total width mm -hmm. which is a difference of 0.26 meters almost about 10 inches beyond the requirements of the zoning bylaw <coughs> we'll discuss about that do you have uh some draft wording for this condition? I'm sorry? 
do you have some wording for the draft condition if you're proposing these uh, if you're suggesting these amendments do yeah. you have something in writing so we can consider this well the owners are right here they've agreed to cut the driveway by <coughs> 0.6 meters two feet mm -hmm. we can we can prepare something if you'd like what's staff's opinion on this if uh, the homeowner is willing to uh, readjust their driveway by point six meters? If, if I may just offer some information to clarify I can confirm that the Zoning bylaw defines the driveway as any hard and level surface that's capable of being parked upon by the whole or a part of a motor vehicle. The concrete that is beside the driveway on the right towards the front door is part of the driveway. Trimming the shrubs would enable a car to park there. Removal of the shrubs would certainly enable a car to park there. So that portion of the driveway will be considered in the overall width. If the owners are intending to reinstate the two feet of permeable landscaping on the right side, as you're looking at that photo, um, then that would reduce the overall driveway width to 7.2 meters, whereas the bylaw permits 6.71. Um, granted, that is a two car wide parking space. The space that's being reduced inside the garage, the minimum depth for required parking space to facilitate the creation of a second unit would be 5.4 meters. That is prescribed in the two unit dwelling provisions of the zoning bylaw and is not in any respect related to the driveway width. May I comment? Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. I agree that the portion of concrete on the left hand side of the house can be considered as part of the driveway. But because the owners have disability in walking, they do need a hard surface there. We can't have that sodded. And there's no way a vehicle can park on that edge, as you can see from the photograph in front of you. As for the driveway depth in the garage space, the tenant parks outside, which has plenty of space for him to park, and their vehicle is parked inside the garage, as it is their home. So we do have three parking spaces for the second dwelling unit, which has a permit to be there. Chair, our staff report says <laughs> there is an existing second dwelling unit that is currently not registered. I believe it uh, received a permit, no? No. The owners had showed me drawings yeah, It is in by the, the process city. of being registered. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, yeah, it's through, it's through that process. And of course, and through you, Mr. Chair, to the applicant's agent. Now we're back to the official plan that uh, says we're not going to give a, a variance just to facilitate a legal basement apartment, regardless of your consideration with respect to driveway. And I respectfully disagree with you. Thank you. Ms. Corzola, we're adding something? I don't have anything proposed, um, and nor have I heard from staff about the um, whether they would support a reduction in overall driveway width to the 7.2 meters that would then result should they reinstate the permeable two feet that is on the right side of that driveway. Mm -hmm. I, what I what I see here, the agent is coming up with a left side of concrete. Uh, we do understand that's, uh, according to you, is a walkway, but as uh, the staff indicated, that, that becomes your driveway because it's hard surface. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not, uh, I don't think so anyone can enforce that whether you can park or not because it's pretty much at the same level and it's hard surface, uh, whether it's a concrete or asphalt. Right? You'd like to add something? Yes. <clears throat> Would it be favorable to recommend that the left side concrete be removed and reinstated with paving stones spaced apart with the sod in between? That still provides a hard surface to walk on in some respect. I guess if you are willing to readjust your driveway on the both sides, then I don't think so. You need uh, the variance even. That For you that will portion, meet yes. uh, the bylaw. Yeah. It'll meet the requirements. 
if we reduce that portion there at 0.86 and then 0.61 on the other side, we should be okay. Yeah, that's certainly something that, that can be discussed with staff. It would obviously not necessitate any kind of approval on the driveway from committee because it would be in compliance with the zoning bylaw. The only remaining issue then would be the reduced parking space depth inside the garage, which is required to accommodate the third parking space that is mandated by the zoning bylaw. All three parking spaces as prescribed in the two unit dwelling section must be a minimum 2.6 meters wide by 5.4 meters deep. That's understood. That's understood, but we still have enough space for the owner's vehicle to park in there with a difference of about three and a half inches extra. As long you are willing to readjust that or you think you need to submit some new information, <coughs> if you would like to come back to a newer, newer date, I can consider that as well so we know what we are exactly proposing here. I can uh, revisit the property once more, take actual measurements straight to the railing to give an exact number. Um, the Stats Canada report shows the overall length of the vehicle that they own and the other vehicles are parked on the driveway, including well, the About the work you have done and uh, you're coming uh, here with the information, which is actually good uh, because once we are making the decision, then we cannot go back. But at the same time, I would like to see your proposed change on the driveway work okay. as well. So, Fair enough. So we, can, uh, so we can make our decision accordingly. Fair enough. Please go ahead. Mr. Chair, I think the concern is still within the garage. Yeah. I said that you've got the dimensions for the car. However, there are bylaws and strict requirements as to parking spot depth, not a matter of how how large the vehicle is. So we need to look at abiding by that, as opposed to looking at the actual dimension of the car. Through sure you, Mr. Chair, to staff, mm -hmm. in the event that the only <coughs> variance was the garage parking spots length, would that change your staff report with regard to that issue? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, if that was the case and, and second unit um, uh, was not an issue, staff report would have uh, considered it differently, yes. Uh, but because of the official plan policy, um, um, second anything that is relating to a second unit has to uh, you know, go through a process that's defined in the official plan, that is the zoning by law amendment. Mm -hmm. Just like to provide an additional comment mm -hmm. that, um, that the, uh, the committee is correct in, in referencing the zoning by law standards because the, the, the change that might be made to a property is a, a, it's a, it has to apply for the life of the property. So regardless of the size of the applicant's vehicle and the viability from their perspective, um, the, the zoning bylaw standard has to be applicable for future ownership and uh, and I, I would suggest that all the staff would review it uh, we can confirm whether or not we'd be supportive of it at this time normally when we uh, look into these applications we always include the condition that any unregistered uh, uh, second dwelling unit uh, is not permitted on any <coughs> so if they're in process, we can always include that uh, condition if committee is looking to going that way. Mr. Crouch? Uh, I find this driveway far too wide. Yeah. Unsightly. If they are willing to... Uh, I think, the, I think the, purpose of the, the purpose of the bylaw is to prevent the three cars being parked that we're seeing in this <laughs> uh, photograph. Mm -hmm. I can't support that. If we have to uh, refuse the second, uh, if we have to improve, uh, if we have to prove uh, impartial, uh, and by refusing the second uh, variance uh, they are requesting, so then they can start. It, through you, Mr. Chair, I mm -hmm. think what's being discussed now is that the owner is suggesting that they will comply with the overall driveway width so that two of the required parking spaces can still be accommodated within the minimum dimensions required by the zoning bylaw on the remaining driveway. The only issue that is up for debate at this point in time is the required third parking space, mm -hmm. which must be accommodated inside the garage. That space is insufficient in 
in parking space depth according to the zoning bylaw. Admittedly, it will fit a car, certainly a smaller one, but the minimum prescribed parking space depth in the zoning bylaw is 5.4 meters. This parking space is only 4.57 parking uh, meters. It's the official plan that then dictates that because this parking space is required to facilitate the construction of a legal second unit, which they are going through the process to register, that that is something that would not be permitted through the course of a minor variance, but rather is required to be rezoned because the official plan policy, as I understand it, does not permit variances to the requirements for the construction of a second unit. Mr. Mr. Chair, just a question. The, this home and the garage were built by a builder? Yes. And was it built to standards? As far as I'm aware, the below grade entrance inside the garage was constructed by, at, at some point, by the homeowner. That below grade entrance leading to the garage was not constructed by the builder. Through you, Mr. Chair. So the, the, um, the way forward would appear that you remove and relocate the entrance to the basement. Remove and or relocate. Certainly the, it can remain inside the garage as long as there remains a rectangular area that's 5.4 by 2.6 meters. Um, it, it can certainly be accommodated in another fashion. They're trying to seek approval from you today for the existing configuration. Yes, I agree. And the reason for that is because the expense to relocate and remove that staircase somewhere else is going to be a considerable expense to them. Uh, at their age and their health, it's not feasible at this time. They'd like to retain that stairwell leading to the basement in order to provide access for the renter down below. Um, we feel that we can accommodate the driveway width if the committee members take favorable to allow us to retain the reduced driveway depth in the garage. Well, uh, it's a good discussion we are having, but uh, uh, I applaud the work uh, you're willing to do and the information you're coming up with. But again, in the city, as uh, we have uh, some bylaws to work with, and uh, when we are here looking on the application, each and every application is unique and different. Uh, I. Personally, uh, I'm, uh, I like to go with the majority of the committee, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm inclined to, if I have the proper information, uh, I would like to, uh, inclined to support, uh, but at the same time, I would require more clear pictures or uh, the proposed change you're willing to do, because it's ju at this point, it's just all discussion. So, committee members, if you are willing to add something, let's start. Well, Mr. Chair, I don't know how we can support that, given the fact that we have to acknowledge there's an official plan out there that says yeah. we can't support this. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair, there is an existing below-grade entrance at the rear of the house, according to our drawing. Is that correct? Secondary exit. Secondary exit. We need two exits, one on opposite end. Because of the of size? Well, no, because of, in case of fire, like a means of egress. Okay. Thank you. So if uh, no <coughs> further discussion, looking forward to move ahead. Any? I move to refuse, Mr. Chair. Motion to refuse this application by Mr. Crouch. Do we have seconder? <coughs> May I add? If we were to offer a deferral on this application in order to show the differences of what we can do to try and come closer to the driveway depth in the garage space, would that be more favorable? I would like and to check with staff if that is even possible. I do understand about the driveway, but from uh, the inside, if there is any way that can be uh, modified. Ms. Corzola, anything you would like to suggest on this, if uh, there is any way that uh, stairs landing to the basement through garage can be modified or satisfy some sort of close to the bylaw if even we consider since the gentleman has asked otherwise we have the motion on the table uh, i would defer to planning staff as, as to whether there's anything that could satisfy them about meeting the four tests of the bylaw 
Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. I think the question for meeting the intent of the official plan would still remain in this case, um, yeah. and it would not meet the tests. Okay, uh, to uh, come back on where we were, Mr. Crouch has put forward a motion to refuse this application. None that I know of. No, I'm not seeing a record of an order to comply either for the driveway or for the um, construction of the permit inside the garage. As I said, they do have a permit. They are moving through the registration process. This is just one of the steps that has to be taken. And based on a deferral, it gives me the opportunity to try and readjust things to make things fit more adequately? Well, I, as I said, I'm okay for deferral as long as we're achieving something. <laughs> Right. If you think you can work around, work with staff, I personally, I am okay with the deferral, but if you're coming with the same information, then it's not going to work it out. Uh, just quickly, how much time you need uh, to work around? Because I would like to put a timeline on it, so we don't want to leave indefinite on this one. Yeah, no, if you're suggesting, but we have to deal with the motion we already have. Yes. But uh, for the information, we need to discuss this now. Uh, when's the next deferral date? Uh, if you readjust the stairwell to permit the length where the stairs currently are and, and move them to the side of the garage, you don't have to come back here. Well, You'll this is what have I'm a thinking. Long enough, uh, parking spot. Exactly. This is what I'm thinking. I'd like to relook at the whole picture again to see but where. But if you do relook at it, you don't need to be here. I understand. Uh, the driveway is not going to win, even on a second chance. And if you reconfigure the stairwell, you're providing your clients with adequate length so that they have their third parking spot. <laughs> See, the problem is if you get a deferral and you come back, yeah. if we're giving a variance that permits a registered second dwelling, right. then we can't make that decision because the OP prevents us from doing so. Understood. So I don't know. So if you understand that, I don't know where you think we can go in, in, in terms of deferring it to yet another meeting where we say we can't deal with it. Well, I'm thinking that if we were to reduce the driveway width, to accommodate the requirements, that reduces by one variance. As for the driveway depth, it might not meet the exact 5.4 meters the way I'm thinking, but I'd have to relook at it again. And, and I, I even agree with that, sir. Uh, but I point out this thing where an application for a second unit fails to conform to any of the requirements of the implementing zoning bylaw, a zoning bylaw amendment shall be required. That's what we're living with. We don't do zoning amendment bylaws here. We just do adjustments. Okay. So I don't, I'm inclined to refuse and say, if you can comply, you're going to have to move that stairwell. You need a building permit anyway. You probably have to dig it up to get the permit, but I don't know that. Yeah. I'm no building inspector. Um, but you just don't need to be back here. Reconfiguring that stairwell, you're out of here. Understood. You don't have a variance to meet. Because uh, clearly, from the, my fellow members, the driveway, the driveway's loser for you. Mr. Anyway, you were going to add something. Um, I think uh, we've just had a good discussion with the applicant, and I think there's some clarity. Um, my my thoughts lie with. Member Crouch, that if we defer, there's nothing we can do to approve this. I think we're sort of in a place where we can't accept any alterations to the to the bylaw. So um, for us, the only opportunity here is to refuse the application, <coughs> and that your clients relocate the stairwell and readjust the driveway to the proper width, to the allowable width. Have we invited members of the public? <clears throat> is there anyone in the audience wishes to speak uh, on this application? I think I asked uh, before, but uh, I'll, get you. I'll no. reiterate my motion to refuse. Okay, so normally I do incline to defer to give, I believe, in discussions, but as Mr. Crouch and we all discussed, even if you're making some sort of adjustments within the staircase inside your garage, I don't think so we'll be able to achieve anything. So we have a motion on, uh, if there's no further discussion, I would like to go forward. 
We have a motion on uh, floor by Mr. Crouch to refuse this application. Do we have seconder? Seconded by Mr. Stoffer. All in favor? <coughs> Sorry, this application has been refused. Thank you. Calling application A18157, <coughs> Satnam Tambor. The property is located at 34 Rose Garden Drive. Thank you, Chairman, Council Members. Again, my name is Peter Vizikas of Empire Design Company. Here to represent the owners. After review of the justification report along with the site plan submitted, we feel that the variance to allow the below grade entrance located in the front yard is minor in nature. The walkout stair is located far enough back from the street not visible from each adjacent neighbors and will have decorative railings. In addition, the walkout stair is serving a purpose set up by the fire department where the secondary means of egress is required based on the square footage of the basement area. Uh, the original intent was to provide an egress window as a means of escape with the permanent stairs built on the inside of the dwelling at the basement level. Given the grandeur of this home, it is more made more sense to uh, walk flush out from the basement level and then up through the walkout stair to exit. Based on the information provided, we feel the variance for below grade entrance located in the front yard is minor in nature and request the committee to grant permission. Okay, any question by committee members to the agent? None. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Staff, could you please win your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this application um, is supportable. It meets the four tests of the minor variance, uh, subject to the following conditions being imposed. That the variance be approved only to the extent, as indicated on the sketch attached to the public notice. That a building permit be obtained prior to the construction of the below grade entrance. And that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the approval null and void. Okay. Are you in agreement with these uh, conditions? Yes, totally, yes. Okay, there's no further discussion looking for a motion. Motion by Ms. Doctor with conditions, with the approved with conditions. Seconded by Mr. Crouch, all in favor? This is approved. Thank you. Calling application A18158, Joe and Philomena DePonte. Property is located at 58 Bartley Boat Parkway. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Richard Dobosch, and I'm from Gasper Designs on behalf of the owners of 58 Parkwell, uh, Bartley Boat Parkway. Uh -huh. uh, we come before you with one variance. Uh, we're trying to uh, make the coverage 40.5% as opposed to 30%. Uh, we're simply just trying to cover the front porch by extending at eight feet. Uh, we believe it meets the four tests. It's minor nature in the neighborhood. Okay. Anything else you wish to add? That's very straightforward. No problem. Any members, any question so far? None. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Sir, please come forward with your name and address. Good morning, my name is Rick Porter. I live at 56 Bartley Bowl, the adjacent property. Uh -huh. And I guess I'm just trying to get clarification or understanding of the uh, addition that's being put on at the front. Uh -huh. um, as far as where it's actually being added to the front. Or earlier this year, they had added a, about a seven foot walkway in front and uh, actually circles around on the side as well to my adjacent property um, and I'm trying to understand from the drawing that's been provided if the front of the house is uh, showing that walkway that's been added and then the proposed covered area in front of that so that it's actually a, uh, an addition of approximately 15 feet in front of the house versus just showing the front of the property being sort of at that uh, behind the walkway that's shown on the drawing. So I'm trying to understand, is it 
eight feet out in front of the covered walkway or is it eight feet in front of the covered walkway based on what's being shown here and I'm not sure I mean when I look at my property beside it if I go back from my sort of existing driveway the 23 feet that it says it's going to go to the proposed front cover it seems to be out 15 feet and I don't know maybe I'm missing the street allowance at the front of the property but I'm just trying to get clarification on actually how big the proposed adjustment is being made um, like I say, I don't have any issue if it's eight feet and it's just going to cover that existing seven foot walkway mm -hmm. but if it's actually out 15 feet you know the seven foot for the new walkway that they've added plus an additional and then that's all going to be covered in that's what I'm trying to understand so because if I look and say well it's going to be 15 feet out in front that takes them quite a bit down the yard there's a big tree there the tree will have to come down all that sort of stuff so there's it's really more clarification if it's just eight feet and it's just covering the front of the existing walkway but the way the drawings presented um, it almost looks like the walkway like the, the walkway along on the right is identified similar to the walkway that's normally there I'm assuming the one at the front is the new seven foot one that they've added and they do show the you know again a, a walkway it appears to me around the side but if they're considering that front one to be covered property now why aren't they considering the one along the side as being covered property as well so I guess that's like I said I'm just looking for clarification to understand what's actually being put in front of the property is it 15 feet or 8 feet and then is it all going to be covered back in the existing 1960s frontage of the dwelling okay. it is the 8 feet right um, when I measure the 23 feet from the front of the from the front of the proposed to the driveway, does that go to the actual street, or does that just go to the? Would the city have that eight feet allowance there, or how would that be measured? It just goes to the boulevard. Uh, it's measured from the center of the street. From the center of the street. No, it's actually measured oh. from the front lot line, which is well back from the actual street line, from yes. the curb line of the street. Um, there is approximately five meters of city boulevard beyond the front lot line. It appears to me that it's an eight foot covering that will then cover the existing paved walkway. Yes. The paved walkway itself is not considered to be lot coverage. Only buildings or structures above that walkway would be considered for the purpose of lot coverage in the zoning bylaw. And, and there's that's why no proposed coverage down the side yard um, to cover the paved walkway along the side of the house. Yeah, and like I say, if it is just covering that existing seven-foot walkway they've added to just cover to the front of that, I'm quite happy with that. He's done a very good job on some of the updates he's doing to the property. So, Yes, and, and compared to what some other neighbors are facing in Peel Village with some of the infill, this is, uh, uh, yeah. this is an improvement to Adele Court, I think. Okay. It's not a monster home. Yeah, <laughs> no, if that's the case, like I said, I'm just looking for clarification and understanding there. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, anybody else in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Motion to approve with conditions. Staff want to be. Oh, staff has to yeah. speak. Sorry. Yeah. Staff. <laughs> I know it's a long meeting, so maybe that's why Mr. Crouch is. I get a little punchy. Yeah. <laughs> No problem. Staff, could you please bring your comments? Through you, Mr. Chair, staff is of the opinion that this application is supportable, subject to the follow following conditions being imposed. One, that the variance be approved only to the extent as indicated on the sketch attached to the public notice. Two, that the owner shall obtain a building permit for the accessory structure within 60 days of the decision of approval. Three, that drainage on adjacent properties is not adversely affected. Four, that the applicant provide tree protection fencing around the existing trees and root zone within the drip line of the trees that are within five meters of the construction area or access route, including any trees on city property. And five, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the approval null and void. Okay, back to the applicant, sorry, the agent. Uh, are you in agreement? 
with these conditions acceptable yes. to you? Yes. Good. Motion to approve with conditions. Motion to approve with conditions by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Mr. Stoffer. All in favor? This is approved. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay, we'll be back uh, 11 o'clock uh, after approximately about 10 minutes of recess. Calling application A18159, Chris Jawami and Hispari Vitalingum. Properties located at 3 Twin Pines Crescent. Calling for application A18159, three Twin Pines Crescent. Uh, 
maybe just one application now. Maybe they are just outside or something. Because I see some jackets and stuff sitting here. Yeah. Calling application A18163, Chin Ting Tang and BB Zoo. The property is located at 3 Professors Lake Parkway. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members. Good morning. Please, uh, you, you wish to add something solidly uh, stated on your application? I'm sorry? Would you name, like? Name. I think he's the homeowner. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I saw him. I'm sorry. Your name? Chu Ting Tai. You are the homeowner, right? Yes. Okay. Would you like to uh, add something beside it already uh, states on your application? No. Any members, any question, concerns at this point? Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Staff, could you please win your comments? To you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff is of the opinion that this application meets the four tests of the minor variance, and uh, staff finds this application supportable subject to the following conditions being imposed. One, that the variances not only be approved to the extent indicated in the sketch attached to the public notice. Two, that the owner shall obtain a building permit within 60 days of the final date of the committee's decision. Three, that a privacy fence of not more than two meter in height along the southeast side property line be provided to ensure appropriate screening from the deck to the adjacent property that drainage from deck shall flow onto the applicant's property. Five, that drainage on HSN properties is not adversely affected. Six, that the deck as identified on the public notice as new build deck shall be no more than 3.5 meter in width and 5 meter in length. Seven, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the approved variances null and void. Thank you. Do you understand and accept these conditions? Yes. Okay. Motion to approve with conditions. Motion to approve with conditions by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Mr. Mm -hmm. Duffler. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Your backyard is really beautiful. Thank you. And I love your driving. <laughs> we don't see that long nowadays. Calling application A18164, Steels Financial Retail Center, Inc. 8005 and 8015 Financial Drive. Good morning, Chair, uh, committee members, staff, uh, Holly McHale, uh, 8015 Financial Drive, here uh, to represent the applicant. There are four variances that are requested. Um, the uh, staffing report has come through with three conditions that we are in agreement with and have no further comments. Okay. Any question uh, to the applicant? None. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? So please come forward with your name and address, please. Good morning. This is uh, my name is Henia Ward. I live on uh, resident number 10, Randa Crescent, uh, just the uh, back of the uh, 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 noted. Uh, uh, application here. Um, according to the uh, application I have here in my hand is there is a, a setback, minimum setback, uh, set by the city of Brampton. And according to my knowledge or what's written on the notes here, it's less what it should be. And that becomes a hazard and becomes uh, um, a way to set back or to uh, get people to play and uh, temper with the area. And I have pictures of people uh, jumping over the fence to my property. And I had to uh, call the owner of the uh, daycare, Mr. Halim, and I explained to him. Um, but for some reason, I didn't get any response back. So um, I think this is something um, uh, disturbing my privacy and my uh, security to my household. And I need to um, find out what could be done uh, to push back all these sheds away from the fence because it's less what is the minimum requirement. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, 
Are you saying they, they get on the shed to get over the fence? They get on the they... shed, and actually the shed is not set uh, to minimum uh, measurement, as the paper said here. It's well, that's less... why they're here. Yes, and uh, there is, um, by the fence in the back, they built uh, a retaining wall, and that's high, about um, 60 or 70 centimeter high, and there is a concrete, and it's like a step up to get into the shed, to get into the house, to the fence. So uh, it's not working together here. And I have some picture for the people who is jumping over the fence, and I have some pictures um, uh, how the fence and the shed is being joined together by a dividers, and that divider, it's like an easy step up over the fence. You have some Thing to show us, like you have the picture. It's on my phone. I'm not sure if I can show you that, but uh, all these faded pictures. If you can just uh, open it up, it will show. And that's the white shirt in the back. That's a gentleman. Uh, a bunch of teenagers at that time was about four or five or maybe more. By the time we try to uh, video them they run away when they see us uh, trying to copy them. It happened once, and when it happens, all my family was in the backyard. And when imagine yourself sitting with your kids in the backyard. Uh, I wasn't home at that point, and my girls told me that there is somebody is uh, passed by the, the the fence. They jump over the fence, and they are sitting relaxing in the backyard. And suddenly, some teenagers jump in the backyard. What do you expect? What do you want me to do? And may I ask what uh, time of day this was? It was the middle of the day, and it was a Saturday. Saturday. Nobody in the daycare, thank God there is nobody in the <coughs> daycare because there is a lot of kids around. And that was my concern, safety of the kids in the backyard, in the, in the daycare, and safety of my family as well. And why should I have to have something sticking in my backyard, in my fence, that high, and that's, and I complain about it, and they promise me it's according to the code of the city of Brampton. And that's why I kept quiet. But when this has happened, mm -hmm. I tried to measure it myself. I couldn't get exactly the measures, but according to your paper here by the city, it's less what the requirement is. Besides, there is one shed at the end of the property, his property, it's been open on the bottom, which is, you know, it's like a very easy uh, living to uh, creatures. And I have these creatures all over my backyard at night. Okay, no problem. Yeah, please go ahead. Through you, Mr. Chair, the, uh, the fences that are in place, uh, I assume they meet all requirements. Um, for keeping people out of the facility because in reference to the uh, neighbor's comment this happened after hours but there was still access um, for somebody that wanted to take that um, if there were a higher fence um, the open fencing uh, if that were installed would that help deter allowing people back there I mean we've noticed uh, the currents and I mean, when we notice this, we call police. Um, we're, <coughs> they're teenagers. Um, whether you put in a four foot fence, a six foot fence, or a ten foot fence, a teenager that wants to, you know, enjoy a, a sunny afternoon. I don't is going think to get so. That's that, possible. Right? Um, Doesn't matter. <laughs> you cannot really compare between two feet to ten feet. Like, 
Yeah, it, it, a, teenager that, a teenager that wants to sit down anywhere is going is to get in. Um, uh, so we call police. We're not of the, of the, you know, we're not law enforcement, or, and neither do we expect the committee to be of the mandate to control uh, teenage uh, trespassing. Um, I believe part of the, uh, the, the concern is uh, an original site plan, the retaining fence and the brick fence that was required as part of the uh, site plan or was installed as part of the site plan actually creates a step Right and facilitates the um, facilitate that all the way out from the north south end of the property close to steels, and because of the grading, it actually creates steps. Um, so as you walk in from the south side of steels, and you can actually step up the, the, the that retaining wall, and it's very easy to get up there. Um, I don't think the sheds are facilitating the trespassing. I think the retaining wall and the brick fences facilitates that. Um, can we install a higher fence? I honestly don't think it's uh, going to do anything. Since we've called police, um, we haven't noticed. We made a report to police uh, when this happened, and we haven't mm -hmm. noticed them come back. We have our own security cameras on there. Um, they went into the sheds and and uh, actually destroyed and used some of the children's toys, and so that we had to put those in the garbage and replace them the next day. So it's causing an expense uh, for myself as the operator of the child care center. Um, but I don't. I, I honestly don't think the expense of putting in a, a larger fence would deter um, would deter this type of behavior. Um, and I don't think the expense is necessary. I think uh, surveillance cameras. We've added some under surveillance postage, you know, uh, signage on the fence. Um, and we had it hasn't happened again after we've called police. Through you, Mr. Chair, the applicant, what would prevent you from uh, <coughs> just moving the sheds into the middle of the playground? I think the expense of moving them also a requirement under the Ministry of Education. So we've positioned them this way so that the teachers have the greatest supervision of the children as they're outside. They're not positioned in the front so that a teacher can see the children or go behind the shed. But, uh, one of the requirements under the Ministry of Education, which is provincial legislation, that uh, teachers are positioned to fully supervise children. Mm -hmm. um, so this way that they're positioned that children cannot go around them, cannot go behind them, cannot go um, on the other side of them. Um, they're located for uh, the safety of the children uh, farthest away um, so that the teachers can maintain the supervision access to all of them. It's consistent with all our sites. Um, we operate about 10 sites within the GTA, uh, two others in, uh, in Brampton, uh, Mississauga, and uh, they're very similar to the positions that we've had in, in, in the other sites. Through you, Mr. Chair, to the applicant, would you be prepared to do something like putting uh, uh, pigeon styles up on top of the back of the roof so that the kids aren't going to access it. I don't mind at all. Like I said, I don't think they're using the sheds to get over. I actually have a video um, of them using the stepping from the footings and the, and the brick wall from the, fr from the south side of steels. If you want, we can show the video. The video. But And as the pictures that, uh, that Mr. Henney has shown, they're not actually standing on top of the sheds. They're standing on the, on the, the retaining wall and the brick, and the brick and fence. I understand right? it'd be a pretty. So we've been more, pretty more than happy up, to add it there. Yeah. Pretty big upgrade yeah. leap yeah. to get to the yeah, top exactly. of the fence. Right. So putting pigeon uh, markers there. At the end of the day, they're kids. They're, they're, they're going to get hurt on that. They're not, they're not birds that we want to put up uh, something like that. Well, little kids aren't getting out of the <laughs> teenagers. Even, even the teenagers, right? Um, so I, I'd be more than happy to continue coordination with the neighbors so that if it doesn't happen again, we can um, you know, get the landlord involved and the other tenants and, and do something with the pigeon. Uh, what you said, the pigeon something. I think that'll be appropriate in this situation <coughs> as well as we are not an enforcement uh, agency but uh, according to the requirement the location of these sheds uh, as Mr. Crouch already asked uh, and normally the sheds are pretty much almost at the end of any lot or uh, whatever at least we have seen no one likes to put them in the middle of I, I believe the way it's said right now it's at the end of uh, the property as Mr. Halim said but if you can switch it all the way on the other side, it's not going to hurt. And it's going to avoid any possibility in the future that someone will attempt to jump again over the fence. So I know it's a little expense, and I hate to do that to you, but, you know, my safety, my family, uh, you know, uh, safety in the same times, it's more because if you happen that there is confrontation with this teenager <coughs> in my backyard, I don't know. I don't want to imagine what could happen. You know what I mean? So, Brampton, there is full of crimes at the point. So, I don't know what this case is. Just teenagers playing or maybe they are coming next time 
to do more damage. I didn't know that there is damage happened to the toys. I saw some toys has been thrown into my backyard and I throw it back, but I didn't follow up because I tried to call and there is no return for my call. So, yeah, like we said, it's, it's, they're, they're, the, um, they're not using the, the sheds to gain access. They're using the, uh, the, the um, retaining wall and the brick fence. Right, they're not, as, as the picture showed. I, so. I could uh, easily uh, see and pictureize this. Uh, it is not easy to jump on the wall from the shed as the slope is going down as well. So this black fence is already there, the pole. Uh, I think uh, someone can easily use that uh, black uh, iron post uh, to go on top of the wall if someone really has to. It's, it's like a, a mesh, you can put your finger and jump climb. And if you look at the second shed on the middle, mm -hmm. if you have a picture of that, I believe so you have one. Mm -hmm. There is a joint fence to uh, um, avoid passing beside it, um, and that's joined to the fence and the shed in the same time. No, not this one. There is another one. <coughs> but sure, that's a fence, it's not a shed. No, no, in between, if you look, that, yeah, this, this, portion, this portion, the another one, right behind it. There no. is a, I, I have a picture here on my phone. We've all been there. <coughs> Here's from staff. Uh, if if you can see the, the, the wooden fence mm -hmm. join the shed and the wood, uh, the, the masonry uh, fence. Yeah. Yes, we're not here about fences, though. But even if we have sympathy, we're not here about fences. <coughs> no, no, I'm not talking about <coughs> fences. I'm talking about accessibility to my backyard. Yes, yep. I so understand that. You, you're, you're making it easy for whoever wants to jump over to have something to climb on. No, no, and I do understand, but what Mr. Crouch is saying, uh, this, uh, this application, uh, we have in front of us, we don't have any control over that fence. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, just uh, on a side note, anyone else in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None? Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Uh, let's hear staff and then we'll come back to the discussion or anything you wishes to add. Sure. We have already noted your concerns. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Michelle? Through Mr. Chair, we, um, based on our review of the four tests, uh, we support this application. Mm -hmm. um, we just have two, three conditions in there. Um, we do not wish to defer this unless the committee has any more questions we can answer that. I believe the issue is uh, more than just a these uh, variances that are being asked for. The, the site uh, plan that was approved um, for the daycare, we reviewed that site plan and uh, the daycare use was approved within this area, knowing fully well that this wall is existing and the existing wall was put as a condition that, that you have to retain this existing wall. So a thorough review would have been done at that stage of what the effects um, of this wall and the stepping there would um, kind of include. Uh, we reviewed just the location of the sheds uh, in relation to that from the privacy and those perspectives, but uh, that's why we've come up with these conditions. Do you want to add? Okay. Do you want me to read the conditions? Or? No, I have a question for you. Sure. 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 Uh, so if if the applicant had if the applicant had uh, put the sheds on the other side of the playground clearly he wouldn't be here today yeah. but he would have had problems perhaps with the inspection agency so now we have the safety of a backyard against the safety of kids um, 
but when you reviewed it, was consideration given to access to the fence? You're, say, you're saying it's minor in nature, but now we have somebody that's saying it's not minor to me. Yeah. So the, the fence, the black fence that you're seeing, the, yes. the wire mesh fence, was a condition of the site plan approval. Only the sheds were not. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a clarification. Um, what we have before us are three sheds. Mm -hmm. Um, the setback for the the least greatest setback is 2.96 feet. Sorry, I work better in Imperial. So it's about three feet. And then the the shed number three is at 4.92 feet, roughly five feet. Um, for me, I don't think somebody can jump from the top of a shed three feet or five feet without doing themselves harm. So I think the the sheds themselves. Um, I don't think are an issue. What we look at from the committee standpoint, and I believe what the city looks at, is being able to have proper maintenance around the shed, um, which appears to be the case. Um, as much as I sympathize with the homeowner, if if we were to look at this in every single case, then everybody's shed would be prone to the same situation, where if it's three feet or five feet, to have people jumping from that distance would create problems consistently. So uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that this was a, an incident uh, of singular nature, and hopefully it doesn't reoccur. If it does reoccur, I think there's something else that needs to be done here, and I don't think it's, it's the role of the sheds that's the problem. That's my personal opinion. Thank you. Okay, uh, to uh, the staff, could you please read these uh, recommendations? To the chair. Uh, we support this application subject to the following conditions that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice uh, that roof drainage from the accessory <coughs> structures shall be contained within the subject property and that failure to comply with and maintain the condition shall render the approval null and void Thank you. motion to approve with conditions motion to approve with the conditions uh, by mr. Crouch Seconded by Ms. Duffler. All in favor? This is approved. Thank you. And uh, I would like to, uh, uh, s uh, even though it's not under this committee's, uh, but to work with the neighbor to make sure the incident happened one time. And if there is anything further, uh, please contact uh, the authorities. Recalling application A18159 for the property at 3 Twin Pines Crescent. Thank you, everyone. Were you on a longer coffee break? But, sorry? Were you on a longer coffee break? No, no, I just, uh, sorry, I, That's my, okay. my apology. No problem. Sorry, your name, please, and address? Uh, Christian Swami Bittelingham. So you are the owner? Yeah, I'm the owner, yes. Okay. Uh, you wish to add anything beside we have this application in front of us? Um, no, I, I guess not. We, we submitted another sketch, a new sketch this morning with Mrs. Myers. I think that's... Through you, Mr. Chair, I can confirm that the owner has provided to us today a revised application sketch and amendment letter, which will be circulated internally as staff are recommending a deferral to November 13th hearing. <coughs> okay. Uh, staff, uh, any pending order, compliance order, anything, any notice of violation? Yes. Yes? Uh, and... Uh, November the 13th, you think that will be sufficient time for all the departments to look into it? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, I think it will be uh, sufficient time to um, uh, look into this proposal. Do we have all the information, uh, what we are looking from this uh, gentleman, the applicant? Um, I have not received the sketch uh, that was uh, 
um, given sub submitted to uh, Ms. Myers today. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will be able to confirm uh, after the meeting. Yeah, but as long as we have uh, within the city. Okay. Yep. My apologies, Mr. Chair. There is no order to comply. Okay, no problem. Uh, and anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh -huh. I received this. We um, just uh, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. We just need your name and address so we can make a note of it. Uh, because right now, what we are going to look whether we are going to proceed with this application today or we are putting into a later date, which is November the 13th. So if you can please uh, give your name and address, but you will be notified. Thank you. And then uh, any of your concerns uh, will uh, we'll like to hear if we are going to proceed with this application today. Okay. okay. My name is Edith Semakula. Could you please spell it? Semakula is S E. M A K U L A. Okay. One name, Semakula. And your name, no, sorry, your address, please? 8 Toad Modern Drive. Sorry, I didn't get the name of the street. Yes, uh, could you please spell the. Toad Modern in Brampton is um, T O D M O R D E N Drive. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have, uh, we're just in process of uh, discussing whether we are going to look at this application today or the next meeting is on November 13. So could you, uh, uh, if you can please wait where we were sitting before, then we'll let you know. Thank okay. You. Thank you for coming. Uh, committee members, uh, as staff is uh, recommending, uh, not staff is recommending, it's staff. Staff is recommending? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we'd like to hear staff first, then. Sure. Yeah. Um, so during uh, the review of this application, um, we requested the applicant to provide an elevation drawing um, as there was uh, no information about the height, how high the door will be, and if there will be any steps required. Um, so we received um, a, a elevation drawing sketch um, after the deadline, uh, the public notices were sent, uh, but at that time, the applicant was not sure if that would be the height of the door. Um, so uh, we requested this deferral to give applicant the time to uh, finalize the height that they need and uh, um, figure out if an additional variance for the reduction in size for the landing for that door will be required or not. Okay. Uh, if a variance is required, would we not would we not hear about the same part of the official plan that prevented us from approving an adjustment a few hearings ago? So that so that if he still needs to come back to the committee of adjustment and it's to accommodate a second dwelling, uh, we'd this, still be without power. This application is uh, not related to a second. It's not related to one. Yeah. Is that uh, through, through you, Mr. Chair, to the applicant? Are you anticipating a registered basement? No. Apartment? No. Uh, sorry, if I can try to explain, uh, when I submitted my application, is that uh, based on on uh, on what I uh, when I submitted the application, I did send the, the the site plan, and the location was a door, and uh, I, I was asked to to submit a, a sketch for the step. So I understand because I was away for one, one month. I just came back last night. So, and so my, my son who is a, my agent took care of, uh, of the matter. And he talked with Mrs. Myers and he talked with a staff member, I, I understand. He has been going around. So he just gave me the paper this morning. So that's why I came for the revised sketch because he wanted a, a second variance, I guess, for the, for the step, which I wasn't which I'm just bringing to us. But he was aware that the, the matter was going to be deferred for the next meeting. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Uh, just for the record, uh, we receive a letter uh, uh, in opposition by uh, Pam and Carlo here, 103 Wenscott Drive, 
they have some concerns regarding these uh, regarding this application uh, if uh, no further discussion looking forward a motion uh, to defer this application on November 13th uh, 2018 if uh, we all are if we all agree on this. Motion to defer for November 13th by Ms. Toffler, seconded by <laughs> Mr. Crouch. All in favor? This application has been deferred. Thank you. To the neighbor, sorry to inform you, but you have to come again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, I don't understand how this affects me, actually. I didn't get it. Okay, What's, you mean the process? Yeah. So whenever anyone applies uh, for any variance, they need, they need the approval for their work. So city notified, uh, city staff notified the neighborhoods. So that's why you received this letter. So this is what's happening in your neighborhood. Okay. So is it going to affect it. my address, my yes. property? Sorry? Or does it affect my property as well? It's just uh -huh. to, not maybe directly, but uh, that's, uh, uh, I don't think so staff can judge that is affecting or not. Oh. But this is, uh, this is, uh, this is, they have to notify it, uh, to the neighborhood and uh, certain, like not really far. But uh, the immediate neighborhood, uh, they always send out the letters. Okay. So I will be back November 13th. Yes, you can, uh, you're, you're more than welcome to come back. But if you have some concerns, you can always speak with uh, the property owner. Or after the meeting, you can talk to staff to for the, for the further clarification. Okay. okay. I'll talk to someone after. Yes, please. Calling application A18166195412 Ontario Limited. The property is located at 31 Hanson Road South. Uh, hello and good morning. I'm Nicole Rogano on behalf of Social Professional Engineers and the owner of the property at 31 Hanson Road South. As you guys know, I'm here to relieve bylaw for parking or relief for parking bylaw for requiring 33 spots and proposing 30 spots for some outdoor mechanical equipment to be installed in the parking lot. If anyone has any questions, please let me know and I'll try to take care of them. Okay. Any members? No questions. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application, 31 Hanson Road South? Seeing none, staff, could you please bring your comments? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, staff have reviewed the application, considered to meet the four tests established in the Planning Act, and are in, are in support of it, subject to two conditions. One, that the owner finalize site plan approval under city file SP14-017.003 to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services within 90 days of the date of the committee's decision, or is extended at the discretion of the Director of Development Services. And two, that failure to comply with and maintain the condition of the committee <coughs> shall render the approval null and void. Okay. We Are have you? no objections to the conditions. Okay. It's no further discussion. Looking for a motion. Motion by Ms. Doffer uh, to approve with conditions. Second. Yes. Seconded by Mr. Crouch. All in favor? Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Calling application A18168, Surinder Kumar. Property is located at 112 Mount Nash Road. I uh, am here again. I'm representing uh, 112 Mount Nash. This is the owner, Mrs. Kumar. Um, we're here to uh, see if uh, the existing as-built driveway uh, will be permitted. I believe the staff report uh, uh, does not agree with this and that we, they've requested for this to be reduced or corrected. And we have some suggestions as how we can perhaps address this. The owner had a contractor who was uh, 
contracted to do the driveway to the garage with, and he went a little beyond in their absence, and they're very upset. They're trying to see if either they can save it or resurrect something and create a boundary line, like a flower bed or you know a knee wall, so we can have the, the regular tourist spot parking and create the other side as a walkway, but ideally they would like to keep it. But if it's not possible, then they will put flower beds and create a walkway and leave the parking space at 7.32. Uh, no problem. We will uh, be hearing uh, uh, the staff, what they have to say. But at the same time, even though a uh, contractor was doing the job, it's homeowner's responsibility to Absolutely. check everything, uh, to check with the city uh, what is the allowable space. Sure. Uh, even if uh, the homeowner were away, that might not that they will be away for many days and in their absence somebody came and finished the entire driving. That's not the case in... I understand. Right? So, uh, even if... Uh, I think uh, about flower beds or any uh, permanent landscaping, uh, then <coughs> you don't need uh, the bylaw. Obviously, you have to work with the staff uh, to make sure all the dimensions are proper. Sure. Uh, up to, I believe, uh, staff will, can correct me when their terms will come. Up to six feet, I, I think, uh, in some extent, you're allowed from the brick wall to keep. But later on, uh, when you go more close to the boulevard side, you need to remove. So staff will have that uh, clarified. Uh, any uh, other question by the committee members to the agent at this point? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, you seem to be suggesting to the agent that uh, some boundaries or something might um, make this mass of concrete um, more palatable. Uh, but we also have concrete in the boulevard, which is not owned by the applicant. Yes, there's a sidewalk. What would we, as well, what right? would we be doing about that on the, uh, just say, on the street side of the sidewalk? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, what I'm uh, interested, Mr. Crouch, to hear staff, and uh, in the case if this is going to be refused, so they have to uh, bring back into the shape anyway. I think in that case uh, they need to remove that boulevard portion as well. Okay, uh, I, I just um, will hear from staff. Yes. Yeah. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Staff, uh, could you please weigh in your comments? <coughs> Through the chair, we had here a picture that showed the before. Um, if you see uh, the boulevard, that's what we're talking about, substantial reduction in the city-owned boulevard space, too. Uh, and then we... We looked at the surrounding neighborhood. Um, we visited there, uh, the street. This is the only one that has uh, enlarged the driveway to this extent. Uh, all the rest of the neighbors are complying. Um, we do not see any reason why this should be allowed to remain as is. It doesn't, um, it doesn't do anything for the neighborhood character, and uh, it reduces city-owned uh, space substantially. Uh, 7.32 meters is what they are allowed as per their house configuration and the width of the lot and the width of the house. And um, it can accommodate two spots on the driveway, two in the house. So a total of four spots for a house, uh, we feel that is as per the regulations. So we sub do not support this and uh, we want to refuse it. Thank you. So by not supporting this, uh, what will be their allowable uh, space where they can, if they have to uh, reinstate uh, the landscaping instead of uh, this concrete, uh, what is the maximum uh, width? If I may just offer some clarification, there's no variance in this case for a reduction in the permeable landscape strip along the side lot line. They have maintained that two feet of permeable landscaping mm -hmm. that would be adjacent to the driveway. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's just a reduction of the overall driveway width I to know. a maximum of 7.32 meters, which is 24 feet in mm -hmm. width. And they can do that by placing permanent barriers, flower pots, 
you know, landscape benches, light posts. Um, I would encourage them, if you do turn it down, to work closely with the bylaw enforcement officer, who may also have some alternative suggestions and some discretion that they might be able to exercise. Mm -hmm. I would suggest, though, that um, you're quite right. They will be asked to remove that portion of the widened driveway that's on the city boulevard at the bottom, particularly on the right side, to bring it back to what would have been appropriately sized as the curb cut. Uh, just to back to a uh, comment on uh, Ms. Shah's uh, remark that uh, in the neighborhood properties, it, uh, like no one has done uh, this kind of work. Uh, normally we use this uh, uh, comment when some homeowner or the agent comes and they try to bring it uh, that we were not aware in our neighborhood, many people has done it. So we say the same way, each and every property is unique. Uh, at this point, uh, at the committee level as a member, uh, I would not be uh, looking into what the neighborhood has done because each and every property is unique uh, and um, comes in front of us. But uh, it's good uh, that the uh, neighborhood has not done yet. I do pass by uh, from this area many times uh, and uh, it doesn't look good in first stance that big of the concrete. Uh, so I uh, would like to move on on this, but I guess when, uh, uh, when uh, as an agent, you or the family will be working with the department, sure. they will be able to uh, uh, tell uh, the homeowner uh, what portion of the concrete need to be removed on the boulevard portion or even uh, other side. Sure. Okay? Absolutely. Looking, if no further discussion, uh, if uh, we all feel that discussion is over, and uh, I would uh, uh, move to refuse. So a motion by Mr. Crouch. Uh, uh, for a move motion. to refuse in accordance with staff recommendations, which would include narrowing the driveway within the next 120 days. Uh, for the weather standpoint, is that 120 days is okay? If I may make a suggestion, if, if you're refusing, the, dis the decision is simply to refuse. You can't then also impose a condition. Um, the refusal of the variance is simply a refusal of the variance. They may work together with bylaw enforcement staff, who certainly has the authority to provide any kind of extension, depending on the circumstances that might be appropriate. Which there we is are quite happy to do. Yeah. So, uh, Ms. Kozola, you're suggesting like we should not add uh, 120 days? That would be my recommendation. I don't know how, and through, the, through you to the Secretary, whether that's even a condition you can impose when a decision, when a variance is refused. I, I haven't seen one before. Nor have I. But it is in the staff recommendation. <laughs> I do see that. I've, I've never seen a condition to tied to a refusal. Yeah. They, they are obligated to comply with the bylaw. That's simply the case. So I would like to refuse. I would like to refuse as well, but uh, I would I would not put any timeline on it uh, for number of days. I would like to amend that. So I think this will be amended refusal. Just a refusal. <laughs> I know. So Move staff, to refuse. Uh, motion to refuse by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Ms. Doffler. All in favor? This application has been refused. Please work with the staff to reinstate uh, according to the city bylaw. Okay. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Calling application A18169, Almaner Farber Murrell. Property is located at 40 Fandor Way. Good morning, Mr. Chair and the council members. My name is Mazar Raja, and I'm appointed agent by the homeowner. Uh, we have uh, as built side door entrance there, and uh, the owner got uh, a letter of compliance, letter to comply from the city, and now we have to have their uh, three by three landing with some steps, and we need minor variance for that, for the si um, interior side setback. Required is 0.9 meters, and we have 0.35 meters. We have some. We have reviewed all conditions, and we are ready. We are in agreement of those conditions. Okay. Uh, 
I would like to make one tiny correction as well. Uh -huh. So instead of 0.35 meters on the side, we need 0.25 meters to accommodate the guardrail after having three feet steps on it. No problem when, uh, is that, uh, yeah, so what I meant to say by the time we'll come to the staff, uh, uh, then they can clarify. Uh, is that's what, uh, you think, uh, dimension is wrong or? Yeah, dimension is wrong. So we need 0 0.25 instead of 0 0.35 so that we can accommodate guardrail on the side of the steps for safety. Recirculate to the entire <coughs> neighborhood, let them know you made the mistake. Or we can, we can accommodate uh, guardrail on the side of the steps. Well, that, that's between you and the city. We're just looking, what we're permitted through you, Mr. Chair, with respect. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're permitted to decide today uh, is whether to give you 0.35 meters, not 0.25. Okay, we'll accommodate the, the, the guardrail on the side of the steps. That's fine. Well, anyway, let's uh, hear the staff and then we'll see. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None? Staff, could you please bring your comments? Through the chair, uh, we have a few conditions that uh, specifically speak about uh, drainage design. Uh, we are not sure if 0.25 will need another review, so uh, we would go with what is uh, approved in this variance and support it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we will need to review it again. Okay, so how would you like to do it? That's okay, we can move forward with 0.35. Okay, so could you please read uh, these uh, conditions, uh, uh, Michelle? Uh, thank you. Can I, uh, just a second. So what, what do you want? Uh, we can move. We can move to the next meeting, or mm -hmm. defer to the next meeting, or we can go for three minutes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, when we can get the next meeting, the very next meeting. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Maybe, but uh, since this need to be recirculate, so it won't be. Side on the side. Ms. Myers, what we are looking if? Uh, I think I would defer to staff and uh, see what their position is on the application. We will need a device sketch, uh, and yeah. would the variance be affected? Okay, thank th thank you. We can go for with this one, and we will have uh, guardrail on the side. We can move forward. Okay. Okay, staff, could you please move ahead? Uh, sorry, go ahead with uh, all those conditions. Sure, through the chair. Um, we support this application subject to the following conditions. Uh, number one, that the extent of the variance be limited to that shown on the sketch, and that a building permit be obtained for the existing above grade side door including the staircase and the landing within 60 days of the decision of approval, that the applicant shall consult with the city of Brampton for a side yard drainage design that ensures that the drainage from the applicant's side yard shall follow approved drainage designs for the property, uh, be unobstructed by the proposed landing and steps, <coughs> and shall be directed onto the subject property not impacting the abutting property, and the applicant shall obtain a written approval to this effect to the satisfaction of the Director of Engineering Services within 30 days of the decision of approval of the committee. Number four, that the above grade side entrance shall not be used to access an unregistered second unit. Number five, that the above grade side entrance shall not be used as the principal entrance for a registered second unit and that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the <coughs> approval null and void. Thank you. Do you understand and accept these conditions? Uh, yes. Okay. Motion to approve with conditions. Motion to approve with conditions by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Mr. Offer. All in favor? Approved.
Thank you very much. Calling application A18116, Syed Hussain <coughs> Husani Milani and Saad Shahad. Property is located at 100 the Gray Drive. Are you from the Gray Drive? Yes. Please come forward. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee and staff. My name is Frank Del Castro, and I represent Mr. Milani at 100 Degree Drive. Uh, we previously had an application for an extension of a basement addition, and uh, there was other variances involved, and it was recommended that the previous application be deferred and consultation with the neighbors and staff uh, be conducted in order to try and minimize the variances required and the impact of the addition. We have had discussions with staff and we've also reviewed the application, the new application with the neighbors and the neighbors now feel comfortable with the application. I have a letter with signatures of 92, 94, 96, 98 with a condition, and 102. <clears throat> there was one more uh, homeowner in the area, and he wasn't available for discussions or review of the drawings on the Saturday and Sunday that I met with him, so I could not get his opinion. Here's, thank you. Just a little bit of background with respect to the application. This addition was proposed for the sole purpose of adding a infinity spa. And for those that are not familiar with it, it is an end endless pool, uh, 17 feet long and seven feet wide that has a treadmill within the water. The idea of the unit is to provide low impact <coughs> exercise for people as they get into their senior years and middle age years. Um, regular jogging and other exercises have been revealed to create problems with knee joints, hips, ankles, and this unit mitigates most of those concerns. So it's strictly used for the installation and the covering of the unit for a year-round purpose. Unfortunately, one of the things that we had a bit of a problem with and was something that we couldn't avoid is the fact that in order to install the unit and to provide the clearances required for service and maintenance and safety, we needed an interior dimension of 24 feet. This is about four feet injection into the rear yard setback plus the foot or nine inches, 10 inches of the wall construction required 25 feet. Now the, the houses are in line, however the fence is at an angle. So what happens is at the north side of the property, um, uh, actually to make it more uh, understandable, on the north side of the addition, the setback is only two feet. Uh, we have sufficient room except for two feet. However, because of the angle of the fence, on the south side, we require five feet. We have eliminated a lot of the concerns that staff had and some of the neighbors expressed by eliminating the staircase from the south side to the north side, thereby eliminating the side yard setback. We have eliminated a privacy screen, which staff considers a fence uh, more than two meters off grade and created a glass and aluminum railing so that it mitigates a lot of the impact of a massive wall. We've eliminated the paragola in order to uh, 
not have any concerns about uh, additional construction issues, whatever. So the only setback that we're requesting is the rear yard setback. Now it's a fairly deep lot and we're actually only using between the south side and the north side an average of about 14% of the injection into the rear yard setback. 14% is not a huge significant uh, request for variance. Variances of 10, 12, 15% and even a little bit more are standard in requests for this type of construction in this type of an area. So the impact is not a significant mi a major variance, it's a minimal uh, minor variance request, in our opinion. Just, uh, yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, first of all. Certainly. Uh, we already been through a majority of the information, as okay. you know, right? So anything uh, new in between, <clears throat> so we can more than happy to discuss? Well, we've, we've eliminated a lot of the variances. Mm -hmm. Staff has concern that it's a massive uh, uh, block wall. I have a rendering here, if I can provide staff, that the top portion is compliance with the bylaw. That would allow us the 20 feet that's standard, uh, allow us a 25 foot setback. The second rendering is the 25 foot setback uh, addition with a 20 foot setback, and we've changed it from a solid wall. The addition to the setback at seven and a half meters into the restricted area is basically glass and a column to, uh, to support the glass window. So there is no impediment to sight lines between the top version and the bottom version. At the request of the neighbor at 98 uh, degree, um, she had concerns about the length of the deck. And we've agreed with her that we would take the deck back to the required 7.5 meter setback. So the deck will be reduced in order not to require or to impediment anything in that area. So really the only thing that injects into the setback is a glass window and a column. That's really not a massive wall. We've eliminated the screens, we've eliminated the pergola, uh, we've eliminated uh, the, the solid block wall appearance and installed window, both at the request of the neighbor to the south and at the request of the owner as well, because he wants as much light as possible. So our concern is that the staff reviews the existing proposal in light of the fact that it's not a major variance, that it's a minor variance, and that the massive wall that is described in their opposition is really not that big of, an, of a massive wall that is being proposed. And it also has the consent of the neighbors in the whole street that affects this particular part of the property. So I believe that we've met the four criteria for good development. It maintains the intent of the official plan that it is appropriate for the general intent of the land development. No problem. That the general purpose of the intent of the bylaw is maintained and that the variance is minor in nature. No problem. We'll get to hear staff's point of view on so, this. Any through questions? you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you haven't addressed the uh, uh, problem that staff points out, the overlook of the adjoining yard. The overlook the, the of deck the privacy on top issue? And the, the deck on top so you can look down over the adjoining neighbor's backyard. Well, um, all of the decks in the area do the same thing, whether they're the existing decks that come out about five or six feet and are about six or seven feet wide, or decks that are built and decks that are be proposed to be built. If you go back from the house to the setback, to the lot line, uh, and put a deck in, whether it's 20 feet or 15 feet, 
the issue is the same. That's why in the original proposal, we proposed a five foot screen fence mm -hmm. so that that would mitigate any, but then it, create, it was objectable to both the neighbors and staff that it created a bigger wall than would normally be required. Well, and it's still so, a very big wall. Yeah, and we can uh, sort of do a temporary privacy screen, something that folds, that if the place is being used, but that is no different than the, the one that's at 100 degree, and um, that's the only one that I really looked at. He's coming out with a deck into the setback area, but it's an open deck. It's not, it's not a uh, closed-in uh, area underneath. Sure, no problem. We'll uh, discuss uh, and further. I see one neighbor. Uh, she was here last time. Ma'am, yes. you can come forward. Uh, anybody else here from this neighborhood or to speak on this application? Uh, as you know, we all uh, know uh, and we discussed in detail last time. Yeah. Anything mm -hmm. new you wish to add, you're more than welcome. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, because name I didn't name. sign. Sorry, your name and address? Yeah, uh, Yan Hua Li. 98 degree drive. Okay. Yeah. I did sign at the paper, and then later I discussed with my other family members, mm -hmm. and then we changed our mind. We still have problem with the setback. The, even this glass one, right? Yeah. We still have the problem with that one. We still have not comfortable with that. So you are in opposition of this uh, application? Like no, that? no, we oppose it. So it, I changed my mind. She signed the letter. I signed already, she but changed I changed my mind now. Oh, I got it. So you're okay with it now? No. No, no. no. okay. I changed my mind because I, I did sign. That's why I'm here today. Understood. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So at that time, I, did, I didn't discuss with my other members, family members. And then. Later, I discuss with, with others. We still don't feel comfortable. And okay. uh, his other concerns is if they have a big addition like that, there will be uh, some areas covered in the backyard. Sorry, what's that? The backyard will be covered, right? The backyard will be covered with mm -hmm. the building. And my concern is like a, the drain way for the water. Mm -hmm like a rains or melted the snows, no be affected. No problem. Yeah, so. Okay, think, yeah. we have noted your concerns. Mm -hmm. When I say no problem, that means yes, there's a problem, but I understand. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> so don't think I'm saying <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so. That's, that's it, I'm here. Yeah. No problem, I mean, I understand your concerns, and yeah. we have make a note. <laughs> Any members, any question? Mr. Chairman, just a point. Uh, in Please, to, sure, come uh, forward. The comments made by the young lady. Um, I can't address the change of mind. That's something that's happened. Uh, however, with respect to drainage, uh, drainage is not an issue. Uh, behind the property to the west is an open space, and the drainage goes to that area. So the additional 500 square feet uh, on a house that's probably about uh, 3,000 and over square feet would not be a drainage issue. So there's no impact uh, with respect to drainage. Staff, could you please bring your comments? Because that is the most important thing at this point. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will be presenting this application on behalf of Dana, who's the assigned planner. Uh, based on the discussions I've had with Dana, uh, regarding the report she has uh, written, um, I'd like to make uh, some points. So, uh, while the applicants have appeared to make as many revisions to the original plans as possible, it is still the opinion of the planning staff that three of the four tests under the Planning Act are not met with, uh, with the proposal. Uh, the proposed variants should maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw, which is the second test. The intent in part of a minimum rear yard setback is to establish a generally consistent rear wall line so that buildings are not extended significantly beyond others 
in the immediate vicinity and that owners are not exposed to large expanses of a neighboring sidewall. Uh, in this case, the anticipated visual impact on the adjacent properties, particularly on the lot line where the addition is, as proposed is flush with the wall of the existing dwelling, will likely result in detrimental impacts to sight lines and the creation of a walled-in field for the neighboring properties. Also, when a deck is built above an addition, that deck is an overlooking position which creates adverse impact to privacy on neighboring properties. Due to these potential adverse impacts, the variance does not maintain the general purpose and intent of the bylaw with regards to the establishment of minimum rear yard setbacks. Uh, the third test is whether the variance is considerable, considered desirable for the appropriate development of the land. The proposal represents a significant departure from the existing pattern of development uh, of the neighboring dwellings based on anticipated adverse impacts to privacy, sight lines, and natural light, the proposed variance is not considered de desirable uh, for the appropriate development of land. And the final test is if the variance can be considered minor in nature. <coughs> Given the anticipated detrimental impacts to, in terms of privacy, sight lines, and natural light to the abutting property, the variance cannot be considered uh, minor in nature. And staff are therefore um, of the opinion that the variance is not supportable. Okay. Please go ahead. Okay, Mr. Chair, just a, a clarification. We are here for um, a minor variance for the rear yard setback. Yes. Um, there's also been conversation in staff notes regarding the fact that this is an elevated deck and that will affect privacy. However, is there a, a bylaw or a variance that we're talking about in that regard? Okay. <clears throat> if I may just comment on that. The deck itself does not require a variance. It meets the bylaw, which would actually permit a three meter encroachment beyond the 7.5 meters. So you would only need to maintain a 4.5 meter setback from the deck to the rear lot line. So no, no variance is required for the deck itself. Um, the deck height is not at issue. They could actually build a deck that's much bigger than what you see there and still comply with the bylaw. It's the building addition below that deck that is at issue because the addition itself doesn't meet and has no permissions for encroachment into the rear yard setback. But the deck and the overlook would be permitted regardless of whether you approve the addition below. Um, I do want to note that I did hear from um, the applicant's agent that they were proposing a to adhere to the 7.5 meters, um, which is the minimum setback for the building. If that is something you would consider, they were looking at minimizing the deck by meeting the building setback as opposed to exercising their right to encroach into that setback, which would be an, an as of right condition for the deck itself. Thank you. But not to reduce the size of the elevation, just. That's so correct. The, the building the addition would still be at the 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 variance. So it simply be we won't can leave at the deck. That's well, the the deck will the guard will be pulled back such that it doesn't extend to the end of the building. They would oh, just okay. they would bring the guard in so that it's somewhere midpoint of the roof of that um, building addition below. Thank you, yeah, Mr. Chairman. May I make a comment with regards to the sight lines and that? I don't know if I would made myself clear before, just didn't do a good job. But when you see the top elevation, that's within the setback parameters. And the, the, the wall is no different. The wall that we're talking about for the addition is no different than the second elevation with respect to massivity, solid blocks, and whatever. It is a four-foot window, which allows lots of light, Sight lines are not impeded, and it has a column, uh, probably a 10, 12-inch column, in order to support the uh, folding screen facing the west and the actual window uh, on the south side. So it's difficult for me to understand the difference between the two, that one is a massive concern and that the other one is, according to the bylaw, no different than in block sizes or construction details, and yet one is a massive concern and the other one isn't. It, it's, it's just a little difficult to, to understand that. Now, I understand that we're encroaching into the setback. However, we're doing that by glass. 
we're putting in a glass window in order not to impede light. And you have a, a two meter high fence. That fence covers up three quarters of the wall, mitigating vis visibility of this huge massive wall. It's not a, a three story addition, it's not a two story addition, it's only a basement <coughs> level addition. Through you, Mr. Chair, just a, a question to the applicant. Um, I guess two questions. One, uh, there's been a suggestion that you could cut back. I'm sorry? There's a, been a suggestion that you could cut back so that there would not be, um, that you didn't, that you would not need to be here for a rear yard setback? We, we can't do that. Uh, uh, May I ask why? Th because the length of the spa is 17 feet and it requires three feet of clearance around for uh, safety issues and maintenance. Uh, there's controls that have to be maintained. Uh, we could probably cut it back um, maybe nine inches to a maximum of a foot if that makes a difference. But there are maintenance issues with the pool that have to be cleaned, that have to, the electronics have to be outside the pool area and they're between the pool and the existing house wall. There's been a, a, a suggestion with Dana that possibly try and cut it back in, but you have to cut out the whole of the rear of the rear house to try you know, put a steel beam in to try and get that five feet into the existing basement, which destroys basically the basement for in that area for usability. And in terms of turning the pool around, well, we we looked at that in the original stages, uh, so we wouldn't have to come to committee. The 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 concern there is that when you do that between the corner of the house, because it has a two-foot jog, if you look at um, <coughs> drawing number uh, It's drawing number 820, which is a plan view of the basement. When you turn that around and you have the existing setback line on the south side. If you take three feet for clearance and you take another seven feet uh, for the pool, then you're basically running into the, uh, I guess it's about a three foot with a door encroachment into that wall. And it becomes a little bit of an awkward way to use it. And the other thing too is this way here, anybody coming out, children, <coughs> Uh, even adults, uh, for that matter, when you walk out from the basement, you're walking into an unrestricted area. If you swing the thing around 90 degrees, there's a potential of one of the younger kids in that walking into the pool because it's so close to the, the door from the rear of the house. That it, it becomes yeah, a little sorry, bit. Sorry, I've done a quick sketch and I'm not seeing that, but I, I yeah. don't have a, a way of measuring this out. So it was a question. Um, and just in terms of, you know, does an extra few feet matter to people even if it's glass? I think nobody quite understands what this looks like, even with a depiction and a rendering. Uh, until it's actually built and it's it's quite sizable. Even well, I, I did talk to the neighbors. Um, um, it was my mistake not to discuss it with them in the first place. But with the second application, I did go to them. We sat down and looked at it. We looked at the drawings. We looked at the areas of the backyard. And most of them are uh, of the opinion that not this year because they just moved in, but in the coming year and possibly the year after, if not full, that they are all going to be building decks. And they're all going to, not, not all, some of them are going to be putting in swimming pools. And when you have a deck, it's not going to be the same type of deck that's supplied by the builder. The lady at 102 has indicated that she won't encroach into the setback with a deck, but she does want a large, fairly large deck to go the width of the house. Uh, and as long as she's within the uh, compliance, you know, that's something that uh, she's allowed to do. So there's going to be major changes to the aesthetics of the rear of these properties. And my, my humble opinion is that the relationship between one rendering and the second rendering is really not that big of an issue with respect to the visibility, the aesthetics, the look, the sight lines, and the impedance of light. I mean, we've gone to clear glass. 
to, in order not to make any obstructions. We've gone to windows in areas where we are injecting into the setback. Uh, we've agreed to cut back the size of the deck to within the setback parameters. The deck is not a, the issue. I mean, even if we had to eliminate the deck, it wouldn't be an issue. The issue seems to be with the addition of the existing, uh, the existing addition going into the setback area. And that's something that's unavoidable. It's only two feet on one side and five feet on the other. There's still 20 feet and 23 feet left, which allows for considerable anemones. The deck does provide anemones that have been or would be taken out from the immediate area of the addition. Those anemones are now can be used on the deck. But again, the deck can be cut, it will be cut back as requested by the lady at 98. Unfortunately, what we can't cut back in order to do this in this manner is the length of the addition. If we could get something else, or if there's, you know, we're, I'm not familiar with any other units, but this is the unit that was purchased, uh, which is sitting in the warehouse, I guess, until some decision is made. <coughs> any other question concern by committee members? <coughs> None. If not, then uh, looking forward to uh, move so we can. Uh, I'm not convinced that the uh, massing is appropriate to the neighborhood and uh, would move to refuse. Is that a motion, Mr. Crouch? Yes. So, motion to refuse uh, by Mr. Crouch. Would you stop? Are you? Uh, Through you, Mr. Chair, we did have a seconder to the motion. Yeah, no. Uh, before the motion got seconded, I thought maybe uh, staff, uh, or maybe there was just talk between two, two staff members. I thought it, it related to this application. Just speaking to the matters that have been raised, we have not received or reviewed these uh, letters from the neighbors. Um, the general position of staff was that the extension of the building was facilitating uh, an, an intrusion into the privacy of the adjacent property owners, uh, enjoyment of their rights in a, in a way that staff did not want to facilitate the bylaw requirement. Um, and so again, we, we're not aware. We were, as, as staff, I understand this matter comes to the committee before and residents had indicated their objection and uh, we have heard from the, staff has heard from the um, applicant today, or the agent for the applicant, is uh, is new information. Okay. I'm sorry. I just I I couldn't hear you. I was gonna interrupt you. Maybe if the microphone is working. It's all the way up. I I, I apologize. I uh, got hearing aids a couple of months ago, and now I speak very softly. So I used to yell at people. <laughs> but I'm sure your case, wife's very happy. <laughs> In, in, in any case, uh, as I was saying, um, that the staff have not received these updated letters from uh, the uh, property owners in the area indicating that they have arrived at some sort of agreeability to this. In any case, we've heard from the adjacent property owner that's impacted that they're not supportive uh -huh. of the proposal. Uh, staff took into consideration the, the character of the surrounding area, the, the newness of the subdivision the standards that have been set by the builder in terms of building massing and design staff were particularly concerned we've heard some new information today from the applicant regarding uh, the extent of the deck and, and staff were uh, not supportive of a, a, a minor variance that would have uh, further facilitated an extension of the deck into the rear yard uh, so that's what we have to, to assist you in your discussion just to, uh, without going into uh, <coughs> much further as we already have motion, but uh, just a quick comment. Uh, if the discussions were there in the neighbor, there, there should have been sporting letters and stuff uh, as well. Uh, but regardless, uh, the position is uh, very clear. We had lengthy discussion in two times, and today and uh, one time, I believe, on September the 11th. Yeah, that was the first hearing. Uh, we have a uh, motion put forward by Mr. Crouch. 
seconded by Mr. Affler uh, for refusing. Uh, I would like to uh, continue unless uh, committee members would like to add something on it. Otherwise, I will look going further with the motion. Yes, there's a motion on the table. Okay, so on motion uh, seconded by uh, uh, Mr. Staffler. All in favor? This is refused. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Calling application A18140, Tri Cab Investments Limited. Um, property is located at Beaumaris Drive West and Queen Street East. Is it necessary that we do anything formal to let Desiree take over as chair? Um, no, I mean, given that somebody's Mr. got to. Yeah, one of the other remaining members will have to assume the chair. Desiree's chair. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so. Go again. Hi. Um, I was asked to be here rather last minute, so on behalf of the owner, um, it was requested that uh, several, like I, there's two variances here that, that are being seeked, and it's for a commercial site that's been site plan approved this past July at uh, Queen and Beaumaris on the southwest corner. Um, I guess throughout the process, yeah, perhaps even after the, the site plan approval or during that time, um, staff had requested a, um, I guess, a feature to be installed on site, a trellis, for uh, for a patio in one of the restaurants there, um, and that was against that was in contradiction with the uh, with the zoning bylaw. So between staff, um, we're obviously here somewhat inv involuntarily to to obtain a variance for uh, an accessory structure in the front yard. Um, where the bylaw does not permit one, and also uh, to permit an accessory structure to be used uh, for patio shade, where the bylaw only permits an accessory structure to be used for parking of motor vehicles or storage of garbage. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, through you, Ms. Chair, uh, do you want to speak to the application for costs? Or are you not retained? Um, I was going to, yes. Through, through you, through you, Ms. 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 Chair. <laughs> um, the first, we have to deal with the decision on the committee. The <clears throat> request for a refund is dealt with as a separate matter. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, I guess, is there anybody in the audience to speak on this file? Nope. Nobody? All right. Uh, staff, could you get your comments, please? Um. <clears throat> Staff are in support of this application subject to the following conditions. Uh, so number one, that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Uh, that a limited site plan application shall be submitted within 90 days of the committee's decision showing the location of the trellis. The site plan shall be approved and the trellis constructed within 240 days of the committee's final decision. Um, that the applicant shall obtain a building permit prior to the construction of the proposed trellis. And lastly, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Thank you. Uh, to the applicant, have you read the um, conditions and do you agree with them? Yes, we're fine with those. All right. Um, any comments? Motion to approve with conditions. <laughs> uh -huh. Seconded. All in favor? Thank you. It's approved. And we have before us a request for a refund. Um, could you speak to that matter, please? That probably came from the owner. Um, he just he had mentioned that he was seeking a potential refund um, due to the fact that this was a decision made on behalf of staff, not necessarily himself, but he was happy to oblige, I guess. Um, so, you know, I guess he's just saying, well, if, if we have to go through this process to appease staff suggestions or recommendations, then he doesn't think he should pay for it. He's already paying for the construction of the trellis. So the request for the trellis, though, was made by the applicant? No. No. It was made by staff. It was a request by staff to Correct. implement the trellis? That's right, yeah. As a feature? Correct. Part of the site plan approval process? Uh, that I'm not too sure because he, was he may have already been site plan approved. I wasn't the uh, agent for that site plan application, but that's my understanding. It was probably around that same time. Would staff know the answer to that? 
Um, so the answer to that is yes, it was requested through site plan approval. Um, so the site plan agreement was formally written up on August the 23rd, 2018. Um, but just to try and give a bit more background on this information or background information on this file. Uh, so there was a rezoning agreement that was put in place on the 12th of February, 2009. And if I can just flip one of the conditions of that rezoning was the conveyance of an entry block feature. So I'll just read that out. Um, so the owner agrees to gratuitously convey to the city in a condition satisfactory to the city, a 1.0 meter wide entry feature block at the Southwest corner of the intersection of regional road 107 and Beaumaris drive uh, to design and construct the entry feature block in accordance with the approved design brief, the city's flower city initiative and the gateway beautification program and that the entry feature block shall not be credited as parkland for the purposes of determining parkland uh, requirements. And then, so essentially that was an agreement to try and uh, upgrade the entrance feature on this intersection because it is a major intersection at a gateway of the city. And so that was done in 2009. When they came through for site plan, app applied in 2017, went through the process, uh, it was decided that the conveyance of a block for that feature would likely not be required if they work with us to create an entry feature on the site. And so that came through in the site plan process. And then one of the special conditions that was imposed to the site plan, um, and I'll just read it out, uh, the owner shall apply for a limited site plan and minor variance application in order to permit a trellis on the patio of the food establishment within six months of the date of the site plan approval. Uh, so that was worked out throughout the site plan process. Uh, is my understanding that the applicant and uh, our staff were in agreement that this was the best way to move forward. Uh, it would be easier for the applicant to go through this process rather than conveying a block to us and have that um, kind of a different type of uh, legal process gone through. And so we felt that this was an appropriate method to uh, be taken. And just uh, to speak to now the uh, reduction or removal of the fees. So it is our understanding that generally fees would only be removed from an application when there was a mistake by staff. So for example, if we were to tell an applicant that the zoning says X, and then that was just incorrect. So they came for an application that was not required. That is when a refund would be issued. But otherwise, we don't typically issue refunds. And especially for a case like this, where this entry feature was agreed to by the applicant through the site plan process, and it was actually a reduction in the burden on the applicant from what would have been required from the letter of the rezoning agreement. So that's kind of where Including we are. the financial burden. The conveyance would have been more expensive. Um, Thank you. Is it Ms. Chair or Madam Chair? Madam Chair. What can we say? Uh, I'm not inclined to uh, provide any refund in those circumstances. This is just a part of planning law. I move, right, you I move. move to refuse. <laughs> uh, I will the second refund. that. All in uh, favor of refusing, refusing to pay back any money. And a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Seconded. Okay, thank you. Thank you.